All right, and we're live right here in Casa de Glassford. It is actually the Pop Culture Cosmos spoiler cast. Welcome, everyone. Hopefully, you get a chance to check out our thoughts on Avengers Endgame. We actually just watched it today. Those two over there have actually seen it twice, those lucky dogs. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be a great time indeed. This is Gerald Glassford from Pop Culture Cosmos right here, but who else is here to share their thoughts on what's coming up right now in our next, uh, what, hour, hour and a half, spoilers galore when it comes to Avengers Endgame. Josh is here also from uh, Pop Culture Cosmos, Humanican Media, and I'm um, joined by these three idiots over here. Go ahead. You're part of the three idiots. Yeah, No, that's what I said. <laughs> Okay. My name is Chad, and I'm so happy to be here with everyone in lovely Nevada. I'm currently wearing my Vita Brace bracelet right now. And, uh, I always love to wear this thing whenever I'm going to be spending lots of time typing, gaming, doing whatever. It kind of saves me from the cramps. Vita Brace, it's a great bracelet. Win with it. We can. We yeah, it helps you if you're going to be some... doing those those prolonged things. It's full of vitamin oils. It is 19.99. Yeah, use the code found in our show, and uh, you can go on their website, put it in, and get a twenty dollars wristband. Or you can put in buy one get one and get one for free with the purchase of a wristband. And also, I am a musician, and I, my music is called Hyper Schmidt. This is Justin. Going to talk about some Avengers, MCU, the future, stuff like that. Tony from Game Source, part of the Pop Culture Cosmos. Tony Stark. <laughs> Talking about some uh, some Endgame stuff. Yeah, it's Jamie from Game Source, hanging out with Pop Culture Cosmos guys. Everybody's here. We're just hanging out. Going to talk some end game. I don't know. Can I interrupt you guys real quick? Will you share with them the fact that you shared with us right when we got out of the theater today about your time frame of sleeping and how many and watching the <laughs> Avengers? This is kind of interesting. This is, I got a kick out of this. We, we, we watched Endgame last night and went back this morning to watch it again. We've spent six hours watching Endgame and six hours sleeping, respectively. <laughs> <laughs> over the past 12 hours uh, you beat me on the sleeping that's for sure because i didn't finish the show until what 3 30 ish or whatnot nice yeah. so w was it worth it in your opinion to lose that sleep for the movie oh yeah worth it yeah definitely 100 percent. i mean come on i went twice it had to be worth it <laughs> twice in in that like period of time like it and got two definitely worth it right Bye. right I'm going to have to think about where it lands on my list, but it's going to end up very high. So it, I strongly recommend it. It's very good. I know a lot of people m will have issues with it because the first maybe two thirds are not as action packed as they're used to seeing from the Marvel Cinematic Universe because it tries to tell a deeper narrative. And to those who've invested their time in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there is a big payoff with it as far as where it goes and how they get to that point. But Lots for those, yeah. But for those that they're just jumping into it, they're gonna like, okay, where's all the battles? Yeah, yeah. Don't right. just jump into it, guys. What'd you think? So we were discussing this on the way over here. I feel like the beginning of the movie was was a, a lot of build up. It was cool to go back and see those those you know those things happen again, like the battle New, battle of New York and all that stuff. But it was just it it felt like it took too long to get there to me. But then the second half of the movie was just nonstop, and it was it was good. You know the Whole thing with the battle scene the, the portals opening up all the heroes coming out like what what they make up what they lack in the the you know the beginning of the movie they more than make up for in the rest of it yeah i would have i would have liked to see like 20 minutes less of setup and 20 then put 20 into 20 more minutes of uh the actual the battle actual ba battle yeah I and, and i would have loved to see each of the characters highlight their abilities a little bit longer or maybe even just 10 Maybe I, ten, even ten. ten. I would have happy even seven. A I bargain. Would have, I would have shaved off certain points in time just a little bit. I yeah. think, and I think you would have had the balance. Oh, sorry, balance. Sorry, yeah. pardon the Thanos pun there. Uh, just right, I think. I also, also, every time someone's cell phone would go off, I would try to snap them out of existence. It, it would. <laughs> yeah. Justin, what do you think, man? I actually didn't mind the 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 build up. I made you. It, it was building. You could tell what it was doing. It was building up for the feels. With all the reminiscing over the past, you know, twenty years of uh, movie watching. But I just, well, what I want to say is that a casual fan or someone that is not invested, let's say you're going on a date, yeah, and you go there, and somebody who hasn't even watched no, there's like a million questions you have to ask. Yeah, yeah, that 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 first third half, even almost bordering on the sixty percent mark, is just since it's all narrative building and it's all exposition, 
I could see them just going like, this is slow. This is, huh? I don't get this. But yeah. To Marvel, but to Marvel fans, it's all a lot of fan, fan service. In, I, I mean, in the, I mean, for casual fans, I can see in the beginning, like there's a lot of woe is me in the very beginning of the movie. Well, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and right, have, rightly so. Yeah. But for a casual fan, they, I mean, oh, they don't, sure. they don't know what's been going on. I was going to say, it felt like there was less character development in this and more development for the story. Like yeah, no cool. single character was really developed much. It was more just getting them from point A to point B. Yeah, well, well, they're, they're, you're 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 working with a twenty years of established characters, uh, but you did. There was there was uh, Barton. You saw what happened to him. His evolution. Uh, the Hulks. The Hulks. Whatever his thing was. <laughs> That was because he didn't get his own standalone and won't. So they had to build it in where they could. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it would have been better than just to him explaining it at a diner. I think that would probably was He said he trapped trapped yeah. himself in a in a gamma room for uh yeah. like eighteen weeks. I would have liked like to have seen yeah, that yeah. Leave, instead of the, the diner talk, I think that would have probably sufficed a little bit better. Yeah. Him maybe being so troubled by what was going on, coming to that point where you know what, I'm just gonna lock myself in a room. And, you know, you see the results of that as opposed to him, like I said, just going for selfies with kids at a diner and trying an, uh, sure. an, an, an awkward moment with uh, Ant-Man <laughs> created from it. So, you know, right, right. It's yeah. just going for laughs. And, and yeah, I mean, it worked, so. but, you know, it was just it just. It, do you it, do you feel like we kind of lost the Hulk as a character, though, and got Banner, Banner instead? He's <laughs> not the Hulk that we want, but he's the Hulk that we deserve. Asked for. But he's the Hulk we got. No, I think too. Like I said, a lot of it balances back on the fact that they, he didn't get his own origin story, basically the way it should have, the yeah. way they wanted. Yeah. But at the same time, is this the right mixture of Banner and Hulk that we wanted to see? It's the balanced version. We did get a little bit of it in like the return to the Battle of New York stuff, but yeah. like you, you miss that, like the the comedy of it, just mm -hmm. having like this big old frustrated Hulk running around. I liked the Hulk from uh, Thor Ragnarok, where he was still the Hulk, but he had lines yes. as the Hulk. Yes. Yeah. When him, like him and Thor are having those arguments. Yeah. I mean, like to me, even then, he came off as more the intelligent Hulk that we know from, like you know, the storylines that we all know. Yeah. As opposed to this one. And yeah. That's what they were trying to do with this one, but it it just didn't come off right. Well, let's break it down as far as the first part when it comes to the opening part where you're. You know, you actually start off just real suddenly, right after the trailers. It just hits you right there, right on the Barton I asked, farm. Is it, has it started? Exactly. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have liked a fade in personally. I thought that would have been better instead of just like a hard, cool. hard one, real hard, hard just a hard shot. Um, and I would have liked a little bit more motion from from Clint. You know, once he realized that, you know, or or let allowed him to have more emotion, more than time, just, more time, just even another thirty seconds. To give him time to just really be devastated, and you see that devastation, so you could so you could feel more for what he does after that. I'm sure there is that. It's just edited out of the movie, and plus, that's not a it's not a kid friendly scene. Do you think right. they should have let him see his family disintegrate instead of just making like he turned his back and all of a sudden they're all gone? Um, I thought it was I thought it was a, a creative way to do it. Well, because look at the the scene with Spider Man, right, right. in Infinity War. I don't feel so well, Mister Stark. Right. And he disintegrates. Well, yeah, they, they, they never show that was a, disintegrating in the, no, of the movie. Awesome. No, but that was a that was a powerful moment for me. Reactions. But dynamically speaking, to like to give someone that dessert of level of emotion but at the beginning he, of the movie I think he, would, like i see why they wouldn't in the beginning i, I get what you're saying but you realize when he does that the russo is doing it to his own daughter one of the, it's one of the russo's daughters oh that's the girl yeah, yeah. Oh. but the the change from because in the comic books he turns into ronin because you know hydra kills his family but in this he's his family disintegrates he goes i'm gonna just go out and murder a bunch of people so it, it, it seems like the change was so drastic that it would have been more believable to me if they showed him like seeing his family disintegrate. And I, I, I as you, I'm thinking about it as we're talking about, I've, I've tends to agree because it, now the more I talk about it, the more flaws, however slight they are, they seem to poke out a little bit more, which is hard for something that should be so detailed for a three hour movie. It has a lot of details that probably should have been put in there, but got left out. I'm not saying it should have been a four-hour movie, but like yeah. you said, 
shave it or you keep it the three hours yeah because it didn't i you know as far as the pacing it didn't feel bad to me as far no. as the three hour i no. you know i don't i didn't mind being in, Even the, in three the beginning hours. yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's just that the way you allot the three hours to each of those scenes i think could have been better structured yeah and better paced and with that would have probably come out of it even with more casual fans and again i'm going back to casual fans and i'm also going back to people just watching it for the first you know first time they're stepping the marvel universe and whatnot because that makes the bulk of your money not just the hardcores the hardcores only give you so much of the money it's when you connect with a larger audience that that's when you really gain success Mm -hmm. and those people they will be able to connect more if they just uh, done some little tweaks here and there to each too too many of those scenes but you know go ahead you you were saying could though, like you were saying, you know, so they're going for the casual fan base, but could couldn't that have been a backfire as well? Because your casual fan base coming in at this point in the juncture of everything, where do they go after that? But, but they you see this amazing movie they don't know anything about before it. It's not a good access point. So they have nowhere to go after. But you have to, you know, just by the sheer numbers it's gonna do, there are gonna be some people seeing this for the first time. Oh, or people who have seen a limited number of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movie because there will be no more movies successful than this one. It's yeah. so before this airs, it will already be over a billion dollars. So yeah, it's just coming to the point where they they also have to go ahead and make sure that they have that universe at least started. And I think they did a little bit of that as far as the the you know the characters that they actually kept alive. Yeah, and that the ones that they actually killed yeah. off. Yeah. Although there is some questions that, that you know Jamie and Tony and I were talking about when in regards to that, but. Go, any parts in the beginning that you really, uh, you know, and then also d- led into uh, Tony Stark. It, you know, it showed him as far as his future is concerned, and that that comes into play. And w- that's because he has a daughter. Him and Pepper Potts has a daughter, which uh, starts to really come into play as far as his thought process is concerned. Yeah, um, as far as the beginning of the movie goes, um, I enjoyed it. I. I was a little thrown off when we went and saw it last night. Like it just straight jumping in. I was yeah, just just, like, oh, if okay. you're not paying attention, <laughs> if you're right. like reaching for your popcorn, it's not, oh, there's uh, Jeremy Renner. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Is this like a. Did I miss the flash of yeah. already? <laughs> yeah. Is so, this a trailer? I mean, not counting the time jumps to grab the stones. You think that there's too many, because there are three time jumps in the beginning of the movie mm-hmm. that didn't have anything to do with the stones, right? You had the part with, with Clint. They had the part where they went and uh, chopped off Thanos' head, and then they had the five years later thing. Do you think that's too many for a setup? I like the five years later because you do need to see the repercussions of Thanos. Otherwise, it makes Avengers Infinity War meaningless. Useless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You must have it. They should have started there though, and then had the other ones take place through flashback scenes. Don't just like you know throw us into it. it at least like with the Barton scene, say, hey. Um, you know, this happened so and so weeks or days ago. But you mentioned uh, what was it? You mentioned uh, Clint Barton. You mentioned the five years there. Oh, you mentioned the Thanos getting his head sliced off. Very anticlimactic. I'm not sure that scene it fit there. Uh, I understand why they did it, but I just, it, you know, it just seemed very anticlimactic. And it, I understand now, especially for Thor, what that scene does. Right, because there's the realization that they can't go, that they cannot, or there's a good high probability that they're not going to be able to save their friends and bring everything back to normal. So I get why it just, for me, it just felt off that that I, that scene. I think it felt realistic. What do you, I mean? What do you do in that situation? Why would you sit there and let someone like that talk? Try and turn and I'll especially like, try and turn just, their daughter against yeah, you. Yeah, you just. You have the ability to. Why not just do it? Well, that was like all oh, the theme of Thor, where he goes, he goes, no, we're not going to talk about it. Just get the stones and let's go. He right. was like, why, why do we have to sit around and monologue about it? Exactly. And this is a a Thor that was kind of, like ever since the bad things happened to Thor after Ragnarok, we see a a more aggressive and he he's not thinking through things. That's how he was in the original Thor, like the original Avengers. He's thinking with his his force and not his his head interesting josh did you have something yeah i just want to say like i really loved marvel's commitment to like the beer belly thor <laughs> well, that's, that's the, the, du- the dude okay okay yeah yeah because it just is okay. to me it's kind of well oh, yeah okay we'll jump into it but to me it's kind of like the cat thing from captain marvel how they just they committed themselves to that joke first off where is goose i know i saw goose in a car commercial just before this exactly. up exactly oh. 
yeah, if you, you know, he's in a vault, I guess there's a debriefing uh, for Audi. It's an Audi commercial with yep. uh, Brie Larson oh, and Goose okay. is in the back. Oh, my. <laughs> but that's that's all. That's no, that's that's that's, that's the only thing that Goose is relating to Endgame. But Captain Marvel is actually what I want to talk about because you all saw Captain Marvel, correct? Mm -hmm. At the end scene where she comes back to the Avengers headquarters, it seems out of place because of the fact that you have to watch that scene to get an idea of why she's there and how she gets there. Because in the movie, there's no context for it. She just she she never introduces herself. They don't yeah. ever introduce this is Captain Marvel. They just she's just standing there in the room with them. They and assume they just, yeah. you watch that and you know very very presum yeah. presumptive yeah. presumptive. Yeah, presumptive. This is why you stay. It, it, it was awkward. It just was very awkward. I would have liked to seen that scene like they did with with Doctor Strange. Right. They showed that scene from Thor Ragnarok in the movie. Ooh, I would have yeah. liked to have seen that scene that they showed at the end credits, even if it's repetitive for us that have seen it in that movie because it, it yeah. builds a context for why she is there. Yeah. Cuz it's, it's like you said she's just there and why is she there? But I'm glad to see that she will get her own chance going forward in the future, but she was not a huge part of it because of the fact that I know a lot of people were, were resenting that fact that she if she was, but she did play a role. She she had her time. It was great to see but I'm, she's the future, and I'm glad that they were going ahead and, and kept the focus of the majority of the focus on the original six. Yeah, I got some thoughts later on Captain Marvel, but I'll, I'll some thoughts, <laughs> for right now I'll just say that they, yeah, yeah, with, with her, I, I think the issue is that you know, as if for for a storyteller, right, for people who like if they're a three hour movie, right, so you have I'm I'm assuming the the script for this movie is about 160 pages. So you're getting to the end and you have all these loose lines of narrative that you have to try to connect and not, they're not all going to connect perfectly. You have to do something with them though. And you know, if you can even get away with making something that, that is this, the tiniest bit cohesive, then it's, you know, it's something you got to do because obviously with a movie like this, you don't have time to, you know, further develop characters. Cause I would probably take another 10 pages, which are another 10 to 15 minutes of the movie. But I, I will say that I think, you needed to see the ramifications and anybody who thought, oh, it's too slow or, or it, it's it's out of place. Then it makes, like I said, Avengers Infinity War meaningless. Yeah. So you need to see the decimation, what happened to it, because Earth is not going to be a happy place during something like that. Yeah. So I want to go back on the Captain I mean, if Marvel. half of this table's gone, <laughs> you know, the, you know, we're not going to be a happy table. It's not going to be That's a happy true. podcast. So I want to go back on the Captain Marvel you were talking about. I feel like that scene was set up. You just didn't think about it. Go back before that. Go back to Infinity War and think about the scene where you see the pager hit the ground. It was implied then. It was set up then. Uh -huh. Yeah, but, it's but that was an ending scene too. Yeah, they don't, they don't you, that was a scope. Who the hell is she? Like, that, all you know is a symbol and a lady. I get that part. A casual fan would have no idea. You will have had to see Infinity War. Captain right. War. We, we need to... I don't think that this is not an, a good access point for new Marvel fans. So I, I think it's not really good to make the assumption that there's going to be new fans jumping in on this one. Without, I feel like if a new fan does jump in, they need to see go backwards. Yeah, watch Infinity War. It's on Netflix. Yeah, but I mean, this is not going to be yeah. somebody's oh, yeah. first Marvel film. Yeah, right. You know, history of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in 20 minutes. There you go. Good enough. Exactly. Seriously. But uh, you know, we we talked about what we thought of the early parts of it. And as it progresses, you see, like I said, the decimation, what happens. I also kind of had a little bit of an issue with Scott Lang's character because of him getting out of the quantum realm based off of a mouse or rat, excuse me. So a rat basically freed him up after five years, which he said equates to five hours, but you saw nothing of where he was at beforehand or, you know, cause he, basically you've also, ha you also have to see all the films, including the, I want to say, uh, you know, not as widely seen Ant-Man movies because they do devote a lot of time and homage to the films. I've told you before on our show that Marvel loves Ant-Man. They huh. love those Ant-Man movies. They're actually, you know, there's going to be another, I'm sure, Ant-Man and the Wasp movie probably at some point in time. Yeah, they're, I like them. Yeah, I like I like I like the Ant-Man and Wasp better than I like Black Panther. Well, but I'm I'm just saying that they they even though they don't they're not the the billion dollar properties that the other right. movies are. They pay they in Marvel they're very much beloved. I can see it because in fact they devoted the time heist 
and also the fact that you heard throughout the period of Wall, Captain America, and Tony, who go back in time to 1970. What music do you hear? Ant Man's music. Yeah. Oh, really? oh yeah, 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 yeah. If you pay attention. And the to Young it. Sheen. Exactly. So oh, they, fun. so they, uh, you can tell Marvel Studios has a great affinity huh. for Ant Man. Is it Paul Rudd or the Ant-Man? just the Ant Man as okay. a whole? Just the idea, the concept, Ant Man, the Wasp. Even if a lot of people as much don't like it or didn't go see it. Huh. It doesn't matter because they're actually going to go ahead and make sure it's splendid. And I thought that was cool that, yeah. you know, even though it's the smaller of the films, that they devoted as much time to it as or homages to it as Thor. True. Which is a bigger property. I, I you know, I don't I don't think that it's unbelievable that a mouse would let Ant Man out of the quantum realm. I, I wish rat. it was rat. Rat, but because at the same time, look at we're talking about you know convenience here captain anytime that the avengers were in trouble in this movie captain marvel shows up out of nowhere and then she's just gone you know it's it's, it's she's like the uh what were those old cartoons where the spider-man just randomly shows up when someone's falling out of a building or something everybody gets everybody gets yeah one. everybody gets one she's the magic box right right but um i they i would have liked to see them explore the quantum realm a little bit more because they kind of built that up to be something really interesting and special in ant-man and wasp yeah, and just yeah. Yeah. Like if they would have shown like the part where Hawkeye is going through, and if they would have shown like maybe some of those creatures that Ant Man encountered in the last one inside the quantum realm, that'd be and even if it was just what like Michelle Pfeiffer said, warning, what was it? Don't go in, you know, don't watch out for the time. What was it for the time loop, the time bubbles or whatever? Time and, vortex. Time vortex. Yeah. Okay. That's what they actually go through, correct? As far as in when they're in the quantum realm or okay. Yeah, See that, but it's not made a hundred percent clear. So, and he never mentions it in his long diatribe. Paul Rudd trying to explain what not. If he said, "Okay, this is what uh, Hope's mom said to me," yeah, the the other time, or he just suddenly knows everything, or suddenly has a good idea what to do as on how to go about it. When he's portrayed as a not a smart guy, yeah, in the Ant Man and the Wasp, you got to because like especially in the Ant Man and the Wasp. He's not portrayed as a someone that's you know as intelligent as as the Van, Van Deens or Hank Pym. Yeah. So yeah. he you know suddenly he gains all this you know wisdom right. when he's sitting there. What he said for was for five hours. Yeah, but he does he does hang out with the Pims a lot, and they're pretty smart. Oh, not, that's true. But I'm just saying that he could have, in his explanation to Tony or to Captain or to Black Widow elaborated more on how he has come to know, know this knowledge or how he come mm. to gain this knowledge and, and why. He, Do you think that Marvel dropped the ball in the last, in Ant-Man and Wasp and didn't explain it enough to set up this movie? I th- I, I'm sorry, hold on real quick. I think that Ant-Man's knowledge comes from experience, whereas everyone else in those movies, their knowledge comes from, from knowledge. You know, they don't have, he's been in it, whereas they, they make theories about it. Yeah, but... Just because you're standing in a football stadium doesn't mean you're a pro football player. You are a pro fan. But it doesn't mean because he couldn't explain in technical terms what why his idea would work. I, and I think that so he came that, up with that in five hours. That fit okay. Well, he didn't. He, he should have remembered the, the part where saying, "Hey, look, this is what okay. If you don't believe me, this information comes from Hank Pym and Janet Van Dien." Yeah. Okay, who yeah. who they Sorry. could easily look up as far as respected scientists in their yeah. field and whatnot. Just just something referring to them, and that also ties in even more Ant Man and the Wasp because if you really have an affinity for that film, as I believe Marvel does, that just a mention, even more, mm-hmm. uh, even though we see Hank Pym later, yeah, uh, the younger version, that but or even if it's even if it's CGI, oh yeah, yeah, but it's still it's um, you know it's just. Just little things like that, I think, are are the issue that I have. And for such a long movie, you have the time to go ahead and put those little details in. And I think they kind of miss that now and then. But, a little extra time to die exactly. Away. But when it hits, this movie really hits a high notes that, that no other Marvel Cinematic Universe movie has. See, here, here's the thing with like the the Ant Man stuff and whatnot, and like the quantum stuff is do do we did we need like 10, 15 more minutes explaining that? No, I just needed like, uh, I just needed another two lines. I three mean, lines. Because did you need the two lines though, based off of the end credit scene in Ant Man and the Wasp? I think a lot it of was people... implied that they did that, and he was stuck. Yeah, but it, so that know, just left us wondering how he was going to get out. Ant Man and the Wasp and Ant Man are two of the lower 
successful movies of in course. so oh. not as many people watch it so you need that type of expert you at that point it's on the person though. you could kind of uh make similarities to where you know how do you get out, yeah how are you gonna get out of the quantum realm it was just a rat how did nick fury nick fury you lose his eye a cat scratched him <laughs> right what you could have been it could have been a cool option yeah, don't, cool, give me, don't give me could have been a cool opportunity and you dropped the ball somebody yeah. took his eye or whatever one of oh, one of the you know one of the biggest badasses around and he gets his <laughs> eye taken out you know that's like that's the yeah. irony yeah irony yeah. oh. i just oh. i think in terms of like um of of scott like explaining this to him does he need to these guys have these people could you imagine black widow trying to explain quantum well, physics well i like how they tried to explain it using movie references yeah, that was like how everybody else hilarious. would try to do it <laughs> but yeah like, these people have have fought literal aliens do you think they're gonna have any sense of well they did have some sense of doubt but like like oh, it, that doesn't make any sense with earth physics like just it it happened that wow, that's so, a thing yeah. you know it's it's not like it's completely doubtable because they've done things in a similar sense, not yeah. not exactly. You know, and let's talk about before. Black Widow for a second here, because I'm not talking about what hap ultimately happens to her character yet, because we'll save that for a little bit. But her development as a character and her and and Hawkeye getting a quite a bit of time in the first third to 40 percent of the film. I think it was very good because the fact that they have not had their own chance to you know, have something of their own. So I, I was really respecting the fact that they were given up a, a ton of time at the first part of the film. I think that was brilliant. Well, they had set it up because they had always said, like, you know, during the last Avengers, like, where was, where was Hawkeye? Last couple of movies, I think they said, yeah. where, where's Hawkeye been the whole time? Or I think they did the same thing with Ant Man a little bit. I think they're like, yeah, you know, they, they both went on a their own, their own journey. Their own, their own. They got the thing, little yeah. ankle bracelet. Yeah, they were on their house arrest. Yeah, and stuff. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that that was not like the the whole thing with the ankle bracelets. Like it would have been because they broke out of a prison. Yeah, in Civil War. Yeah. That's, oh, that, that's and then they true. weren't there for yeah. they weren't there for Infinity War. Yes, and I understand that they, I understand that they made a deal with the feds, but does the feds really make a deal like that if you just break out of a prison? It, it depends if you have. Well, they don't. But they don't. They're both regular people. Yeah, so that was kind of weird. How it, it, that's another. I mean, it was something for another day. Well, Barton worked for the government. Was, yeah, wasn't yeah. the whole like premise of like it's civil war? Like they were on the side of. But remember, they were know, in that maximum security prison for a reason, and they got busted out by Cap, and suddenly mm -hmm. they're okay to be out and about in the world, even if it got an ankle bracelet. Why not just put them back in security prison? But I'm going off on the tangent there for, for another movie. That, that destroyed the earthquake that was under the yeah. ocean that we don't handle. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. All right, but yeah, I, I, I'm really in love with the fact that they had a chance to go ahead. Both of them shine. I think there were characters who always been great supporting, especially uh, Scarlett Johansson and what she's done. She's been a she's been a real key to what's gone on in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Excellent, in, uh, you know, as far as in, in the Winter Soldier and the Civil War, and she's been that person that all these other main characters, especially Cap, has bounced off of now for for a long time. And it's, it was nice to see her take a leadership standpoint as far as trying to, you know, when Cap was trying to go through therapy and talking about his issues and whatnot, that she was still trying to find some way to go ahead and, and keep yeah. to keep everything going in the universe. So mm -hmm. she was keeping the team together and whatnot. So I, I really like that. I think she's had a good uh, story arc throughout the MCU as a whole. Even if she hasn't gotten, uh, she didn't get her own movie. I think she's. It, they have she's one had coming good out. Character development over. I mean, she was she was in. Uh, she was a, had a huge part in civil, in uh, Winter Soldier. Yeah, ex exactly. So I, she'll get her own movie. Yeah, yeah. I, it's probably going to be a it, prequel for. Yeah, know, it'll reasons. be in the past. I, I, yeah. I don't like the way that they killed her though. Like, I feel like oh, after everything that she's been that. through, what? Uh, oh. Spoiler. So wait, is it called a spoiler cast? Are we not spoiling the movie? Yeah. No. But I'll tell. Okay, so I, I think that after everything that she's been through, like that was she should have seen the final battle before she died. But again, that comes back to the Soul Stone. You're listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos. Looking for an edge the next time you take on your favorite video game? Then check out Vitabrace High Performance Gamer Wristbands. Packed with the power of fruit seed oil, Vitabrace is clinically proven to help improve performance giving you a better gaming experience. 
Head to MiracleFruitOil.com and use the promo code MEDIA10 to get $10 off your Vitabrace purchase. Whether you're looking to beat the time on your latest speed run or are fighting your way to the top on your favorite multiplayer or battle royale, Vitabrace can help you reach your gaming goals. Buy Vitabrace today at MiracleFruitOil.com. That's MiracleFruitOil.com. Vitabrace. Win with it. Someone who writes quite a bit. Let me ask you this, Josh. Okay, let's let's go into context here. If you haven't seen it, and I don't know if you haven't seen it, I don't know why you're actually listening to this bit. Yeah. Okay, spoilers. Ah. There's a point where they go back to what's the planet again? Vormir. Vormir, and they meet up with the Red Skull, who's not played by the original Red Skull, oh. who is played by Aaron of The Walking Dead. But you know that's another issue entirely. Who's actually pretty good. He did, does a pretty good impersonation of him. They have to make a choice and. You know, it's Hawkeye and Black Widow who love each other as, you know, that friendship love and all that. They fight to see who could go ahead and toss themselves off the cliff. And unfortunately, after a little battle, it was Black Widow. I know a lot of people will probably say, oh, it should have been Hawkeye. It should have been Hawkeye because Hawkeye is the least popular but, of any of the Avengers. But that was the brilliance of it is with her line at the end before it happens is kind of symbolic as to the whole MCU franchise. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, I think it was a good choice. Just the fact that because everybody thought Hawkeye was going to be yeah. the one that was. Well, well how, how a spoiler do you want to get right now? Yeah, it's a spoiler. Cast, All right, man. fine. So she says you have to let me go. It's kind of to the fans that you have to let these characters go because it has to end. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Until it doesn't end next year for her. as a <laughs> Right. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I think it was. Uh, I, I, I think even though my, you know, a lot of people be sad this, to, you know, for what happened. I think it was was a good call. It's like I said, the Hawkeye would have been the easy call to make. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was an easy call. Yeah, he just yeah. Lost, he lost his whole family. Yeah, what was that? What did he have to lose, really? And and again, it comes to the you know who's more popular or whatnot. And Black Widow, who's done so much for advancing you know the female perception in superhero movies since she came out in Iron Man two, and you know has done so much in regards to that. Her you know her agreeing to do it because I'm sure they ran it by her and just did she just didn't blind say you know what okay don't kill me off you know, yeah she could have she could I bet she could have had enough weight and pull where she could have said you know what uh you know I I, I don't want to die and well I like how she was so integral throughout the pretty much the last like several like major movies since yeah. since Winter Soldier really mm -hmm. how everybody always bags on her because you know everybody has these powers and she's there with her little gauntlets and her guns but yet she's the one in the end holding everything together. What if there's a plot twist, right? And it turns out that all this time in the MCU, she's been a Red Skull super fan. Turns out that she loves Red Skull most, and then she kicks him off the cliff, and boom, Soul Stone. Whoa. Right? Plot twist. <laughs> Red Skull. Marvel's calling you. Line two. Josh has his tin hat on. <laughs> He said, don't the call limo's us, we'll coming. Call you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I said, it was probably for the best that that she of the two probably you know took the fall on that. And I just think it was uh, a, you know a decent way to go because you have to make that commitment and sacrifice for the Soul Stone. And uh, at that point in time, if you're going to send those two of the team members, there was really no better members yeah there was no better fit for that i, I think other, was, than, other than let's say you say uh, pepper Potts and tony stark oh. and tony stark offs himself and but then what does that do to set up the rest of the movie i think it was nice to have a obviously it's not nice but for in a story perspective nice to have a death that seemed like it's, it's meaning permanent. that has meaning yeah, because the people that got dusted in infinity war we we knew they were coming back. We didn't know how, but people like that timelines Loki, Gamora, oh, and now Black Widow. Well, yeah, Loki is still dead, except uh, on Disney Plus. Uh, are you sure? No, he got Loki away. Got away with the oh, that's right. That's right. But, but, yeah, that's right. In the uh, in the timeline, yeah, it's still yes. a different timeline, Loki, though. Yeah, at, at the well, end, of the and, day. and it's a different timeline, Gamora. Right. Right. Who I guess uh, has to re fall in love again with Peter Quill in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume yeah. Three. Who we still haven't. We we didn't never saw after the battle. We. Well, she wasn't on the ship either. Yeah, that's, no, well, she's that's not why coming she back. You can't thing. come back after that. She's busy. They she's too busy clear. making avatars. They no, they made it clear you cannot come back after your soul stone. Well, yeah, sacrifice. but we have the new Gamora now. That's that right. was the thing. Right, 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 right. We we didn't see her after she need. <laughs> Star Lord and Heimdall's. Uh, I know. Yeah, oh, that, yeah, he, he, he has yeah. permanent. Yeah. So I, I I think it's good that we we're having those permanent deaths in this 
the fantasy world where deaths a lot of the times don't mean a lot. So I think it's it's good from a story perspective moving yeah. forward. Yeah. Otherwise, this movie would just feel like it was worthless, like nothing actually happened over this over the course of these years. So would you say that up until this point, there's kind of been a lack of consequences in the Marvel universe? I would say in cinema, I mean, well, until unless you want to get into it, until Game of Thrones came along, you kind of knew who the bad guy was always going to win, the or the bad guy was going to lose, the good guy was always going to win. In most movies, like you don't walk into a Die Hard movie going, I bet he's going to lose this time. You never know, man. But uh, yeah, it's nice to see, you know, finality sometimes. Yeah, actual like is actual consequences in these movies is. I think that personally is a good thing to see because it's something that we we don't get. True. too often it gives it gives yeah it gives it more weight because it, it's one thing to have the story in itself and even if everyone came back that's one thing but yeah. it's another thing to you leave people going home like wow this movie had an impact right and i i loved how everyone is building this buzz around who's going to die between tony and captain america because that was another thing like you knew one of them was going to die and, and that gave it so was, much weight there were so many hints towards yeah. both of them throughout the right the I mean, movie. They, kind of, they both did kind of do their thing you know yeah, uh, yeah. at the end of the day well you know something they're gonna have to figure out something it's it's 90 year old captain america coming to the rescue literally you didn't like that Okay, we'll, we'll touch on that near the end. When it comes to what we saw in the middle stages of the film, uh, we started to see now that they had an idea possibly where to go, uh, they approached Tony Stark, who had his new life. He had his wife, Pepper Potts. He had his kid, who you know he was obviously worried about. And that, you know, obviously worried about, in fact, that he, had, he thought he would have to make a choice between once he realized it's a possibility, whether or not, okay, I want to save everybody else. And then my own kid, you know, gets erased in the timeline. You know, that, that was his, you know, dilemma that he faced. And I thought that was a good dilemma to, for him to face. And something that, that I think that, you know, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have believed someone like, uh, you know, Robert Downey Jr. And the character of Tony Stark would have ever, you know, fathomed or even comprehended. So I thought that was good. But as, as it went on and they started to go ahead and, you see the plan forming and whatnot. Um, how did you like the fact that, uh, or how did you like the the premise and the way that they, you know, um, I guess unfolded as far as Thanos becoming aware of their the plan that was going on? Because it, he he became aware of the plan uh, based off of a uh, the original 2014 version of Nebula, getting the same images from the future Nebula that was in the same timeline. So I mean, it's easier it's easier view than actually explaining it. But did you like that explanation on how Thanos became aware of their plan? It's like when two phones sync up to the same device. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought it was clever. It was it made it easy? Yeah. To I guess reintroduce Thanos to the to the idea of being the bad guy. Yeah. Because you thought he's already he's done. They killed him off in the first you know twenty minutes. So who's the bad guy? Is there a bad guy? Or is it just them trying to figure out how to fix this? Now, the Black Order, again, was rendered useless in this film. <laughs> uh, they were rendered almost useless in the Infinity War, but this time they were rendered extremely useless in this film. Way easier. Way easy. Way easy. I mean, yeah. they're just, they're, they were, it's like, why were they even there? Eh, you know, it just didn't make sense. It was a punching bag. But they weren't even there long enough to be a punching bag. Yeah, yeah just one thing, I, one thing I did like, is they, they got it right in the last one, too, is I liked the team up the mm -hmm. team ups of the teams oh. like i really liked iron man and ant-man together that was re that was really good they had really they had, they worked off each other really well the as we said the but they didn't go they didn't do it because they didn't give you any hint of it in the past scott lang's character had some issues with tony stark because of all that hank pym had told him and you yeah. see the animosity building there right away when he starts explaining everything and whatnot but you don't uh, if you haven't watched the ant-man movies you're not going to know why you're not going to know why so it's it just like i said a couple lines more of exposition would have would have helped you know anybody that's that's not as familiar to watch it but so. it, it is a perfect reason why you you can't you can't jump into this movie someone 10 years from now will yep. not be able to buy endgame from the five dollar bin and be like wow i really enjoyed this movie right, as a single right. movie but if this movie is going to get anywhere close to 
what Avatar has done or even $3 billion. You're going to have a lot of people seeing this for the very first time as yeah. far as their initial entry, whether you like it or not. And right. a movie, you know, I think the one of the things that you want to say is, and one, that's one of the things I'm contemplating in my head on where it will fall in my Marvel Cinematic Universe list is how does it set up the rest of the movies? Is it a great payoff for everything that you've watched in the 22 movies? But on its own, does it stand up full circle on its own? I think it in it, it might be helpful to look in at like Harry Potter, for example, the seventh Harry Potter. Is that a movie that can like people just jump into? Like, do you feel like that's kind of is it comparable? Do you guys think feel like it's on the same line? Because people are watching this just to be part of the event. I because mean, of just how big it is. Yeah. If you're watching this just to be part of the event, then you you probably know that you need to see the other part of the event. And if you're watching this to watch it. Don't watch I, it. I, I mean, I'm not saying don't watch I it. Know, but it's like, um, give me your ticket. You're I'll watch it. For yeah, you. Well, watch just, a catch up why, video on YouTube. Why, quick. Why, I'm sure they have them. Many. I know there's going to be a lot of people that are, are going to go see this movie just to see it. But at the same right. time, don't expect to know everything about a movie that has the word end in it. You're seeing the end of a story that you haven't been a part of. I wouldn't even. It's, it's that, but it's also the fact that if you think about how Gerald was saying, like, you know, the casual fans won't get this, the casual fans won't fully get that. But at the same time, if you think about it, the movie was never meant for the casual fan. This was a straight love letter to all the fans of the other 20 movies that they wanted to give everyone a right. payoff that, for. Yeah. It, this movie was never meant for anyone to just go, oh, I'm just going to go watch this movie right now because it's the big thing to go do. Well, they are going to do that, and and either either way, Disney succeeded because they still have your money. Exactly, yeah. it's, exactly. It's inevitable. Either way, at the end of the like, day, they got what they wanted. Right. Yeah. Whether or not you come out of there knowing what you saw or anything like that, I think that's on a that's that's on you as a person. Yeah, that's yeah. A person by person. Basis. That's a choice. If you make that choice to go in there and never saw any of the other movies, then don't complain Sheesh. when you have no idea what's going on. Yeah, true. And they definitely gave people enough time with this too, because they they shot these movies back to back. This movie has probably been ready to go for a while now. In terms mm. of just well, not editing because they were editing it up to the very last moment really? they had to shut that out. Yeah, they actually had several interviews. Oh, yeah, probably. I was actually uh, watching a lot of their interviews mm. that they would have, and they just literally would tell you, "Yeah, we just got out of the editing room, and as soon as we're done with this interview, we're going to go back." Oh, because God. yeah, because they they God. wanted to tweak it. You know, I, I, like you said, the majority is probably was already done, but they wanted to tweak it, whether it's CGI or whatever, just type of you know to their satisfaction just to the very point where they could go ahead and ship it out. And I would then, love and then get pirated from there. I would love to see the iterations that they were making up into those last minutes. That'd be kind of fun to go back and get to see those. There's got to be a lot of deleted scenes. Now they're saying that there's not, yeah. really? but when you have scenes in the trailers that are not in the movie, exactly like the that, scene with Black Widow shooting at the target that never happened. Don't the, the Russo brothers film those on purpose though? I yeah, read yeah, yes. they did that with, yes. Uh, Infinity, in Infinity War, War. Well, like, yeah. which I think is a good thing because yeah, for sure. Tra I hate when trailers show all the good stuff. Ninety percent of of the things that we saw in all of the trailers that they released were in the first 15, 20 minutes of the movie. Right. No, it's not even that. I read something last night before we even went to go see the movie, and they were saying that the trailers that we all saw were intentionally nothing that would spoil or even. Give, at, give right. They did a good job of, movie, of concealing you know, it. And that, yeah, I, I will compliment like that on it. Yeah. Where you see where you see all this action, all this hype, and then you go see the movie, and that's like 10 minutes of the movie, and the rest of it just sucks. Yeah. They didn't do that. Yeah. And, and if you go back and watch those trailers now, after seeing the movie, you'll know which parts of those, those are from. Because a lot of people, when they saw uh, Tony walking with the, the big group in, when they're in the, the quantum suits, they're like, oh, that's that's got to be fake. He's probably dead already, or something like yeah. that. Or when they when they first see the Milano, or what is it? Not the Milano, because they used a different ship. Uh, what's the other? Oh, Benatar. They, mm -hmm. The Benatar. Eighties references. Uh, <laughs> so, right, Pat. Uh, Alyssa Milano and Pat Benatar. Uh, you know, you got to know your eighties history. But anyways, uh, when they first see the Benatar and they're coming out the Avengers facility to to see, you know, who, mm -hmm. the, who that is. That's actually the same shot there. Everybody was saying, okay, why is there a gap between Mark Ruffalo and Don Cheadle? 
Edited and, out. Yeah. The, oh, there's got to be edit some edit. Some out. No, there we didn't. They were just spaced apart like that. It freaked everybody out. It, they were messing with people the whole way Funny. through, even in scenes that they actually left into, uh, the, you know, that they, they put in the trailer, but that was le the guy who's blocking. was like, whoop. Yeah, they, yeah. They didn't show Hulk walking in that, uh, the suit scene either they didn't show yeah. Hulk or thor because i think with thor that it, you know way it would look like it looked like there was right, it, right. i think it was intentional with thor because if you would have seen thor True. in that part in the trailer it would have ruined a good portion yeah. of the movie I mean, everything that every promotional item including like pop figures or if you look at the the shirts they all show infinity war thor they yeah. don't show <laughs> our beer belly thor right. and, and that's something i want to touch on during the course of the film when they first meet up thor five years later in new asgard it's in iceland okay yeah that's right <laughs> we got to reenact one of that scene new, new asgard new asgard in iceland <laughs> and they meet up with him valkyrie looked like she was heading the town already and she's taking a, a his lead and that's funny because tessa thompson is from los angeles so she has a british voice but yet in coming up in men men in black international she has her normal voice oh, funny. <laughs> yeah and, uh, playing alongside chris hemsworth in both movies yeah. oh that's yeah. yeah right yeah so that's that's what's it's trippy to me just to see you know why does she have a british voice in the first place right. yeah so but be that as it may uh they meet they hulk and rock exactly Sounds hulk cool hulk say. and rocket um they they look for thor they finally found thor devastated five years later and like you guys said, and what was pointed out by so astutely by Tony, and those are little writing things that I love so much that even though the Russos and the McFeely and the writers, they're not the actual original writers of Iron Man, that they still, in both Infinity War and here, still kept the flavor and the dialogue style of those same characters mm -hmm, yeah. as they were in their own movies. And mm -hmm. that's something I appreciate, the little snide remarks, like when he calls Thor Lebowski. Yeah, no, remember in the Ragnarok, he calls. He's, uh, he's uh, Point Avengers. Break. He, he calls. He calls. Um, he calls Thor him Point Break in in Avengers. Yeah, yeah. And then in, in uh, Thor Ragnarok, when he's trying to log into the ship, he's like the strongest Avenger. Oh yeah. And, he, his, and he's like, no. And then he's like Point, point break, break, and he's like accepted. Yeah, exactly. But the, it, it's just great that they kept those type of dialogue. Because how often have you seen a movie uh, handed off to a different director and different set of writers, and that same character you remember from a previous film? is speaks and acts totally different not not to before. not to trigger anybody but we could, we could talk about star wars if you wanted to yeah let's let's, <laughs> let's not go there that's it's, another that's a spoiler cast for another day but getting back to what i wanted to allude to is how would you like the turn for thor five years later to see him in a world of depression <laughs> guilt anger a lot of booze and and some uh, fortnite yes yes self-loathing and some fortnite like you said I, I i thought i was like i wonder who's can we look him can anyone look is him it? up yeah so, anyways, was it Nuke Master but what? There's something, yeah, something like that. I think it's like. What, it was what did you guys think of that? As far as his transformation in such a negative fashion, I loved it. I, I, loved I thought it. it was great. I thought it was brilliant that he yeah. looked like the Big Lebowski. I yeah. thought that was hilarious. That's exactly what I saw, saw, thought of when I saw him. And I'm I'm glad and, that they. And Tony pointed it out. And Tony pointed it out. I'm glad that they kept the kept it throughout the whole movie, like Josh said. But I but I also obvious they made it. They yeah. obvious like yeah, they, they like it's obviously someone it. who's depressed. And you know, I like that he's hanging. I do like the the Korg and Meek for there. That was <laughs> this guy's being mean to me again, though. A, a lot of the dialogue it's like a, was it's not like a regular circle. It's like a freaky circle. <laughs> a lot of the dialogue was catered to that particular arc for Thor, and I thought that was cool. Is that the actual writers, you know, McFeely and I forget who are the other writers, or is that the actual director and writer of Thor Ragnarok? Was that him saying, okay, what, or McFeely calling him and saying? What would you say in those lines? How would you go ahead and interpret that scene? That Maybe would have been a really interesting way to handle the movie, handing, having all the directors kind of come together and round yeah, table yeah. it. Calling Favreau. Okay. Uh, what would Tony Stark say yeah. in that scene? Yeah. It's like um, in Infinity War when they grasped uh, the Guardians so well. Yeah. Because yeah, like, uh, in the credits, you can see that some of these directors were exec executive producers on this thing. Oh, like James yeah. Gunn was an executive producer yeah. on Endgame. Yeah. He... So they they must have it's asked for, to do for, which is, is so good because they need to keep that these characters the way they are throughout these movies because no one wants to see team, yeah, no one wants to see Ragnarok Thor and then immediately go back to like hello Thor. well because well, 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 yeah, it also it also gives it's like a big brainstorm like hey what were you thinking about doing with your character in my I'm gonna use because I'm using them in in my movie well think right. about it too the the Russos inherit these characters right yeah when they started this whole saga they inherited. 
whatever the last director of that film's and, version and usually of that directors character don't care. was. They want to just tell their version. Yeah. But it's cool to see them all kind of on set together and they're like, all everybody's brainstorming about what they would do with the, their own characters. One, one thing I like about Thor is, so he's this guy, right? He lives his whole life as this like confident, right? Like, like everything's awesome, right? And then he meets us humans. Well, and look what happens to him, to his, his, the course of his life from the beginning of meeting Thor to him with the humans rubbing off on him. But that's Thor. I mean, Thor was written much differently in Thor in the Dark World. And he obviously didn't like that very much. And he said as much. But then uh, Taika Waititi, he actually, you know, changed and wanted to write Thor in this direction, which Chris Hemsworth obviously loved doing in, in doing in the, you know, that Thor Ragnarok, Infinity War and now Endgame. And it's nice to see his involvement with the character because everybody seems universally happy by it. Now, whether he continues in the series or not, that remains to be seen. Will he be a part of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? Because that seems to be a natural progression for it. We'll have to wait and see. Although I'm hearing more and more rumors that he doesn't want to be a part of it anymore, which is I think would be a but, mistake for him. Well, I heard that the, 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 the guy Tiki, I can't remember the hell's name. Taika. But I heard Taiki, yeah. Taika. Yeah, I heard he wants to do another Thor movie. Well, I heard Chris Hemsworth would do another. He said he would do another Thor if it were with YTD. Oh, he enjoy working with him a lot. Yeah, it's hard for for that character because Thor is a very dark character in the comic books. He has, mm-hmm. you know, even the uh, the rebuilding of Asgard, right in New Mexico. Like that was a very dark story arc because he comes back to life after the Civil War happened, and he finds out Tony built a fake version of him, and they have this big old duel in the desert. Really? But just like that, that loneliness that he experiences in that comic book, like it's, it, it would be cool stuff to explore, but it deviates so far from where Thor is at right now. Same thing with, you know, Ragnarok, it, you know, they mix Planet Hulk and Ragnarok together, but Ragnarok, very dark comic book, but it still would have maybe would have been cool to, to see that or maybe see flashbacks of it at some point. Well, I also liked his, uh, he was like, you know, in the other movies, he's always kind of like the, not like. He's always like the go-getter, the front runner, or whatever. But in this movie, because he's, he's kind of depressed, he's very broody, and he's he he really doesn't want to be there the whole time. He even says so the whole time. He goes, "I don't want to be here," and uh, it was just cool to see that change and how he had to like overcome that in the movie. But as the movie progresses, I mean, it gets towards uh, you know redemption arcs for many of our characters. Were you satisfied with the redemption arcs of the main six? Let's go with that. Just the main six. Not anybody like, uh, unfortunately, uh, War Machine or Nebula or, or whatnot, or even Gamora to an extent, who gets a redemption arc of her own because she's brought back to life in, in a different time frame. Were you satisfied with the redemption arc and the, the attention that was paid to them throughout the film? Definitely with Captain, for sure. I think the only one that I didn't really care for and I, didn't, I don't understand where they were going with it was the Hulk. Like, I agree. I, 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 yeah, I agree with you on that. I think I, Hulk, a, I didn't know where they were going with it. Like, is, 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 yeah, how does it end? Is he done? Is he what? Like, yeah. what's gonna happen? Well, Ruffalo has stated that he st- he still has like a movie left on in, in terms of a contract with that character. So, like, I'm sure we're gonna see something else. Um, I'll tell you what we're gonna see: the Hulk with Doctor Strange type powers. But did you uh, did you like so the exposition that he had? Because one of the scenes is where he. So, okay, and during the middle of the movie, they go ahead and split up into different teams. Uh, obviously, we talked about what happened with Black Widow and Hawkeye going to one area. Then you had War Machine and Nebula going to another planet, the actual planet in the beginning of the Guardians of the Galaxy, where Peter Quill finds uh, Wishstone. I, I love that part, too, when it yeah. cuts away from the opening scene, and yeah. you realize because he just has the headphones in, and they, exactly. watch, they watch that. And that's where, they become, and that's where yeah. Thanos becomes aware of what's going on and what they're trying to do to stop him. But then another scene it, during or on that same type of timeline is Tony Stark and Captain America and Paul Rudd as Ant-Man them going back to the actual original Battle of New York in, in 2012. But also it includes the Hulk. That part of it, I'm not sure, I, I think I think went a little bit too long with the Hulk part of it, as far as him having the conversation with Tilda Swinton's character. But I thought that was, a nice, Doctor I thought that was a nice tie-in for Tilda Swinton, though, because she was yeah. a big part of yeah. Doctor but Strange. But I thought it, it dragged a little bit. Yeah, uh, it could have been, been a five-minute scene yeah. if you wanted it to. Because they had a cutaway. After uh, and they come back to it though. Yeah, I think if they had kept it just one scene, that would have been a lot easier than just cutting away from it and then going back to it. 
because I don't know, that felt a little weird. I guess. Yeah. What do you think about going back to Battle of New York itself? I liked it. I liked. Yeah, the, I, I liked. The, I liked the different perspectives yeah, of the. Oh, gee, it was the first. Sorry, it was the first Avengers. Sorry. But. Oh yeah, it was. It was the first Avengers. I love the heavy nod to the Winter Soldier. I love. Yeah. yeah Robert Redford in there. With, Frank with Carrillo. The, I like we goes. They're all Hydra. Yes. And how and how and how they even played off of the the story arc where it turns out Captain America is part of Hydra. Yeah, he, that was from the controversial yeah, yeah. comic uh, book series. Yeah. Yes. And where he where he says hail Hydra in the film. And although I would have liked to liked it better, even more if Captain America after he says it, just like you know, uh, you know, it really, really has a disdain for what he was saying. That would have made it even yeah. more special. Or imagine if they actually just put that clip in the trailer. Yeah. Just like it all goes, and all of a sudden, just cuts the Captain going, "Hail Hydra!" Oh, oh, that would have set it on fire. But exactly. uh, I also liked when uh, Captain had to fight himself. That yeah. Was, that was like he goes, he like, like, "Yeah, yeah, I know." <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's good. Because we got to the the end of of Cap's story arc as a as a character, I think like because you had uh, um, said uh, the I could do this all day, and he you know so yeah I know I think it's good that we saw s- some like he he's done with that those uh, like one liners and things like that it, that you would normally come to see. One thing I want to say for the end, well actually you know we we can't say because it it's the end, but there's something as far as. Captain America's ultimate demise, which I know you want to talk about, which you don't like very much, Josh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But don't let me forget the actual aging process because he has a super sauce. Doesn't that slow the aging process? Mm, to an extent, though. Remember, he was frozen. He was yeah. flash yeah. frozen for yeah. that. No, but time I'm talking. Jump. Well, but we'll, well, we'll talk about why we're yeah. talking about him uh, and an nature. But him having the super sauce in him. I thought that slowed the aging process. From what I, they only showed a part but he's but a if life. he's from if he's from yeah, that time uh, period, he looked pretty good. If he's, if you know what those people look like, what I have looked into at least recently and from coming into Endgame is the serum itself doesn't stop aging. No, it, it slows does, it down. It, well, not even that; it reduces the effects of what aging is doing. So, because he would have been ninety something older uh, than that, he's you know, that's part of the end. That's part of the end. We'll yeah. talk about that in yeah. a second. But it, like I said, they go ahead and complete their plans to an extent. But Thanos becomes aware of their actions. Mm-hmm. You guys seem to like the fact that Thanos was made aware in the fashion that they did. I just thought it was clever. But also, one thing about the this, the back the going back in time is I loved the scene between Tony and his dad. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought that was really good. And that was an initial job. What happened there is after they go back to the Battle of the New York. They give Paul Rudd the scepter. Yeah. And Tony Stark and Steve Rogers go back in time for one last jump to 1970. Yeah. And specifically, why 1970? Because that seems to be the only point in time where they have two Infinity Stones together. Is that correct? Well, yeah, that's when they had the that was when they had the Tesseract because they had the Tesseract the whole yeah. time. So it was locked up there. Yeah. At the original army base where he was at, where you see again in Winter Soldier. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then I liked. I also liked the reference to when he's looking for Zola. Yeah, absolutely. It's Arnim Zola's ma- name was mentioned there because that's but, the same bunker where they found the computer, a version of him. So, yes. in Winter Soldier. Yes. Captain America saw Peggy Carter. I thought uh, she would look at him and yeah. think he was a ghost. I thought she would like so, uh, do like yeah. a double take at I the end. She was going to turn, like, and, and then he'd be di- he'd be gone. Yeah, he disappear. And then also Tony Stark does go face to face with his dad. That was a little contrived at the beginning, but I like the fact where it ended up. Howard Potts. Josh, what do you think? It it was weird because they didn't really make the intentions of Tony's dad clear right there because it kind of seemed like a setup to me. And then it ended up not being a setup. But no, I I like that scene of them going back in time. The window scene was weird because the blinds were clearly open and she was just not. (laughs) You and. You you would know you would know like even like the, her her the way her eyes were set up you would see somebody standing right but there. She had a lot of reflections. She had a lot of reflections. I, I guess I guess, but these are military people, okay? They're not trying to be oh, aware. They're, they're, they're tr- yeah 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 sure. It it gave a nice it, it, I guess helped round out Tony's story arc before his you know his ultimate end. And- you're listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos. Don't touch that dial. Wait, do, do people still use dials? Get ready for Box Art, a gaming docuseries from Pyre Productions and Rob McCallum Films. If you love video games, chances are there's a box cover or cover image that you love and has stuck with you for decades. 
In our series, Box Art, we travel across North America to visit with the unknown illustrators and artists responsible for creating the most iconic gaming images of all time. What was once scheduled to be a 90-minute documentary is now a six-episode season packed with unbelievable tales that paint a picture of the gaming industry you've never imagined. Just one of the many pop culture projects from Rob McCallum, Empire Productions. We're getting to the middle point. We're actually leaning towards getting to the end part, the last, uh, what, 30, 40% of it, which sets up some really heavy exposition. And when they come back from the time jump and they're in a normal time, the five years later, and they come back and they realize Nat was gone because of the sacrifice she had to make from the soul stone, but they, they've got the stones. I was still upset at that time because I was still devastated over what happened to Nat and, and yeah. uh, conveying that emotion uh, between them. It seemed, seemed like the Avengers team was really shaken up by it. And I like the fact that they were able to convey that emotion for her. Yeah. But shortly after that, I like the fact that it hits you hard to the fact that Thanos is now aware and he comes after through the time loop, through a through the old nebula. And the old nebula helps everybody come back uh, as far as Thanos is concerned and his entire army into the five years ahead mm -hmm. time zone. And, if, you know, at first you think, wow, man, the Avengers headquarters, which has been rumored to be devastated, is definitely devastated. Ooh. That part I really enjoyed. That was... I thought that was an amazing scene because you have Ant-Man looking out and seeing the the birds yeah. and things like that, seeing this life that's seemed to return, and you just get hit with that that blast. I of, thought Tony died right just there. Everything going. I thought Ant-Man yeah, died. Yeah, yeah. No, I thought Tony. I thought Stark. And he was because he was hitting up the top two with his without his helmet on. He got blasted. Well, but Ant-Man didn't have his helmet on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, suddenly just, he has it after you know the dust has settled. It yeah. was that was crazy. Did you even catch that? As the missile went through the window and was starting to explode, you could see him. But yeah, that, that's why he was small when uh just loose everything travel. else happened. Yeah, exactly. that's a, that's some that's a, that's some good reflexes there for you. <laughs> With some ant, like, I'd be just like, like, would you think at that point, yeah, that he'd be so uh, small, he would just be like, <laughs> just yeah. Yeah. these were a hot missiles, they were just concussive. Got it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got Thanos it. doesn't, he doesn't deal with that, the heat, yeah. It can, no, but it, it, the physics are different because the movies. in the movie, the ant movies, the physics are different when you're smaller. Oh, right, yes, right, he's in this, because yeah. he can, like, you know, he's like a bullet, knock you out when you're when he's the size of like an ant. True, true. okay. Are we talking about the ending now or no? Getting close. Okay, well, I'll save this till then. So Thanos, so Thanos actually is coming down. He's reigning as supreme. He's 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 now searching for the stones, which actually have now been merged together and had just been merged together onto a uh, a gauntlet made by Tony Stark. So it had the iron. I like the Iron uh, yeah, Man say, touch of it. Yeah, let me just say, I loved the way that gauntlet looked so and the cool. way it formed. Hot rod red. Around. That was that was amazing. <laughs> yes, uh, and uh, you know it's. It now gets to the point where I guess because the Avengers, uh, you know, headquarters blew up uh, because of Thanos' ship Sanctuary, was it called? Is it a, I think it's sanctuary. Yeah, Sanctuary destroys it and the whole base is destroyed. But you see the remnants of it as far as people coming up from the dust. And where does the gauntlet end up? Right near Hawkeye, underneath the tunnels and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And those hyenas from oh. the, the Infinity War are, you know, chasing down his neck. And yeah. Nice to see him get a little bit of, uh, you know, screen time as far as being able to save the day. Because I know a lot of people don't like his character. I know a lot of people have issues with him. But the fact is, he is the most relatable of that, you know, original six because he's the one with the least amount of powers. He's the one that's most like us. Yeah. yeah. So. And I like I'm a his dude scene. With the bow and arrow. Yeah, None yeah, of this makes sense. <laughs> when, I like his scene. And a sword now. Yeah. When he's going, when he's scaling up that silo. And he's kind of running around having those the sword mm -hmm. fights. I love it. All really reminded me of uh G.I. Joe when uh he's when, an American yeah, hero. Yeah, when Snake Eyes is having the, the fight oh, on their cables. Yeah. yeah. I think we uh we glossed over an important event right before Thanos uh did all this is we, we never said who who put on that gauntlet because that's that was a decision they had to make after the oh, that's yeah, the yeah, absolutely. So so that once Thor they go I ahead with the gauntlet, they in order to get everybody back to what happened was the fact that Hulk, Hulk actually put on the gauntlet. He did the snap to bring everybody back and you start seeing those remnants of it. And you just barely get the idea that, Hey, yes, everybody that suffered under the snap actually is living now. So you get that just before the Avengers headquarters blows up 
And that's a good reminder because you'll need to know that coming down a few minutes later after, you know, all the dust settles and, and you see that impending fight coming up between the big Lebowski Thor and then uh, also as well, Tony Stark and Captain America with Thanos. And I like that scene because there's a big battle scene between those four characters. Mm -hmm. And I really like the fact that they had time to just fight themselves mm -hmm. because it shows also as well, one of the key points when Captain America finally wields Mjolnir, which is something that really shocked me because the fact was, and I talked about this with, with you, Jamie, uh, I thought I said, I didn't think he could do it because in Ultron, it just showed he could, he could be a move it, but he was a worthy person in Ultron. How is he more worthy now than he was then? Cause he had to lose. Yeah. I mean, he became humbled at that point. It's true. And I like how they didn't mention how he had just stolen a hammer from that th timeline store. <laughs> and it was, this was after he had, yeah, he had been defeated and like was marching towards the enemy, like even like to his impending doom. That he, he got the hammer after that, right? And what? It was when uh, it, was, it was when Thanos was about to kill Thor. But that that was after that was. After oh, are you talking about Captain America? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah but it, she just he stole. Thor's hammer from the timeline and it just it didn't seem like that matched up very That's well funny. with how things ended up but no it was cool I like seeing like the uh they both had the lightning powers going on and that whole line when he's about to wear the gauntlet and he goes do you know what's running through my veins and Don Cheadle his character goes cheese whiz <laughs> as soon as Cap got hold of Mjolnir it seemed like he in, had like instant knowledge on how to use it, how to wield it, and how to you know just like have some awesome attacks with it. That's just like okay. Well, well, it is magic, so why would why would he not? I mean, if he, you, if, he, if, he, if he if he can wield the power of Thor, well, who says he can't use it? You, you watch Thor for so long do this crazy stuff. Seems I mean, like it. Why, would why come wouldn't you know? Naturally, how to do it? I mean, he's familiar with what it does. Yeah, mean, yeah. It, remember the if to to me, and... yeah. Right, and he like he knew the 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 vibrations and all that. So he knew where he could play with it, whether or not what's gonna work. I guess if that was a discrepancy that bothered you, let me tell you about a discrepancy that bothered me. Right, when they're all fighting and they have their headsets in, and then all of a sudden Valkyrie is in the conversation. She doesn't even have a headset. How did that happen? All she just has like super hearing. Music, what what's right? going on here? No, they all have little tiny Bluetooth earbuds. I mean, because that's supposed to be a big moment when oh, Thanos. He looks like he has the upper hand. And the only thing is now he needs the gauntlet and the other three are big Lebowski, Thor, Captain America and Iron Man are all just thoroughly just been shaken up. And all of a sudden you see the grand entrance from everybody else. You know, that, that was pretty cool. That's yeah. despite the fact that Valkyrie, like you said, does not have the uh, earpiece all about the earpiece. It's still, it was still kind of cool to see that moment because that's, that's really the fan service moment. My be I, I remember my beef with the movie how tightly grouped the three of them were when as they were walking together felt really weird to me i was like i would like i, I imagine them like kind of walking up separately but i feel like they were all kind of like really tight together as they were walking towards him so there was there was my beef that was my block and beef oh, that, was, that was my little block it just felt you know yeah, but it still it led to a you know a, i guess probably the moment i was hoping for and that is the big battle that is the big battle where where all the sides of good facing off against thanos's <laughs> dark army the black order who was there for like five seconds yeah and you know all the shintari and all that the, the shintari they were like briefly seen in the in the battle of new york and then like brief even really le brief. less yeah really brief in the actual big battle itself it was mainly the hyenas uh yeah and, and the, the big uh, yeah orcs yeah the, the big orcs yeah orcs. which was a new which was a new monster we added. saw them in did you, did you, they, you you see them in which one? Yeah, isn't it? No, there was. When they you were introduced. Out, you see Thanos for the first time out in space through the portal. You see some of his, his forces, and I think you see some of those big troll guys. Then, way way back at the end of. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember. I, don't remember. Oh, okay. was, like, uh, I know what you're saying, but I don't remember. Oh, okay. I thought I thought I'd remember seeing those guys before. But yeah, I mean, you see that major battle take place, and even like I said, the Black Order and the Shintari, for the most part, are there, but yeah. not even shown very well. The battle itself was pretty good, <laughs> almost like playing hot potato with the uh, with the gauntlet as uh, hmm. he, Goods trying to keep it away from evil and That's and fun. all that. And um, they gave uh, they gave most of the characters enough screen time to get a, re a realization. They did the powerful moment that Marvel has said that they were going to do for a long time, and that 
lean more towards a female superhero demographic. There's a scene in there where all the female superheroes are collected together. Josh is up. I know. Jo- I know that. I know. I know. Josh is 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 not. Uh, well, you know what, Josh? Go ahead. I, uh, I, I know. I work with Josh. So, so what? That that was a cool scene, but from a strategic combat perspective from a strategic combat perspective what were they all like oh hey hey women assembling over here ladies come on come on we're doing this like in the middle of this huge fight and all of a sudden all the women are together that doesn't make any sense to me i think they could have tastefully still done the girl power thing if like imagine like thor's getting down and like Someone comes up in the background and to save them. And then but they, as they zoom out, you see that it's these six girls all, around. All and of the, them, you know? and all the scenes that way. showed these girls, they were in different points of the battlefield. Right. You, you know whose fault this was? Who? Brie Larson's. <laughs> this, this is definitely is that, this, that scene was definitely her idea. I it feel it feels like it. It there really was feels no like way it. it wasn't her idea. It was it was a cool no scene. But... It was a cool scene, but it just it felt super forced. Yeah, yeah, it was. It didn't. It didn't feel organic. Like if they had, you know, if there was a fight scene with Scarlet Witch, and then she was with the uh, the. It was a hot potato issue. So okay, you know, okay. Um, let's say Shuri has it. She's running with the gauntlet. Somebody knocks her over. Gauntlet falls down. The Scarlet Witch yeah. gets it. And then Scarlet Witch has it. You know, okay, for sure. Place, that is more organic than maybe what you saw, like them all gathering up at, it, at one time. Really I, I can I, and I can understand. It that. felt really shook and woke. No, it's like shook in my face. Oh, yeah. I thought you said it shook. Yeah. I'll be honest. Like, as much as uh, I, I'll, my feelings. Uh, but I will say, it, but... for me and someone who has daughters, it was good to see, and I. I know they will get enjoyment out of that. Mm-hmm. That yes, it might be forced as far as from a filmmaking organic sense, but I know as far as what I you know I think should be portrayed on film, and I know that what Kevin Feige and and going forward in the Marvel universe that they want to show and portray on screen as far as from all sides of the avenue. I I, I think it there's some point it needed to be there. It could have been more organic, yes. But I, I am but I'm glad it is there. That we, yeah, that we have we, we have like a bunch of women Ooh. in there that like enough to have a, a assembling force yeah like i said that watching it was cool but like you know we've had this discussion a lot on the show and you always fight me on this but i think that well when i watched the scene i was thinking what you it, oh i'm sure you should not sacrifice saying. good writing to push like a social agenda to port, yeah, real yeah world problems yeah i, it, hear, I got a question for you gerald you know, they, because you know, if you Josh puts this on his Facebook page, you yeah, know, no, yeah, part. you know, you know, they 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 tout Captain Marvel as the you know the, the new strongest Avenger or whatever. Uh, I, I do like the fact that she wasn't overwhelmingly powerful. I don't. I really? do like yeah, that because she, 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 she well, flew but, right uh, through it. But Thanos, her going up against Thanos, she didn't feel overused she, in this movie. Not against, overused, but she felt overpowered. But not against Thanos, know, though. Not against yeah. what he headbutted her, and she just stood there. That's the first time he was tossing her around with a rag doll. Then she comes yeah. back up to him in his face. He does a headbutt, and you just hear tink. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, happened. the headbutt, yeah. the headbutt deal. Yeah, right. Like three times in a row. But but okay, but really the, the thing. No, no. Well, kind of. Where did she? Where did she? Where did she get her powers from? Exactly. If we all, if you, everybody saw the movie, where did she get her powers from? Generator. Infinity Stone. Who else has got their powers from an Infinity Stone? Scarlet Witch. Witch. Why isn't she just as powerful? She, she seemed like it was. was. She, well, yeah, but they don't ever tout that. They always touted Captain Ma- Captain Marvel. This is the strongest. This is a strong female, and from different stones. True, but bring back Vision. Oh, oh yeah, that's. A, I guess that's another uh, yeah, yeah. another person that I didn't uh, think about. Uh, D- Disney Plus. That's what Disney Plus is all about. Oh, uh, it's we seven bucks. Want... Dude, I. No, cheaper, that's, that's cheaper than Netflix. Thing, but Disney Plus is... There was a cataclysm battle that took place, which I, I actually wanted to see more of. Yes. It's more detail in as far as the battle at the end, as far as the big battle between yeah. both sides, because that's what you want as a fan. That's what you're hoping to see is those big comic book cataclysmic battles. Well, they kind of kind of already gave it to you that. Yeah, but I, this, I, is more, this is more fighting no, on personal level. But right. this is all sides yeah. in the same area at the same time battling the forces of evil. To an extent which we may never see again. But that right. goes back to what like me, you know, me and Tony were talking to you after the movie, and we said, you know, even Josh, we said, Josh, Infinity War was the brawn. This is the brain. Yeah, the, you know, this this was a story that was used for finishing 
finishing off what, what they need to do, making this making plan and, and leaving, doing it. Leaving the avenues, because I know I saw plenty of avenues for them to take this little arc or this little arc or, you know. I do like the fact that Pepper Potts got one last rescue. hurrah in the in her <sighs> iron uh, rescue. Her suit was tight. Look, her, yeah, her rescue suit. Amazing. I would have loved to see them call her Lady Ironheart, like a uh, Riri from the the new Iron Man comics. Okay, where was Gru? He was very he was very little. Okay, and that's yeah, that's another thing too. Winter Sorry, Soldier in both of thought. these movies, Winter Soldier did not get his due. He has the same thing running through his veins or a cheap knockoff of what Captain America has. But yet all he does is just he has point the strength. All he does is just point his guns at people and shoot them. Like he does, they don't show any like cool brawling scenes with him. I, I just yeah, he's just firing off the running scene from Avengers: Infinity War where uh, Captain America and uh, Black Panther take off. Yep, but and, Bucky but does it. But yeah. Bucky can because in the in in, in Civil, Civil War, War they're running through the freeway. I've told you that before. I've had it. It, it really bothered me in Infinity or when War. when they're in Civil War and they're like. Doing that slow run to the hangar. I thought they had super speed. Well, no, but like, yeah, you know, but the, you know what? But remember, the buildings coming down on it. Well, yeah, yeah, but remember, like Bucky, he took out like like half the Avengers in that movie. Yeah, and yeah, but they they, they made him so weak, so underpowered. He, all he has is a gun. You have a machine gun. Ooh. And even at the end, he doesn't get the respect he deserves. I think he should have had the first first dibs for Captain I agree. America. Yeah, I agree. because they put so much emphasis on the relationship between Bucky and Cap, and then. Yeah. Okay, I, I got to... Well, there's a reason for that, but... I got to point to the, no pun intended, the white elephant in the room. Do you think they did that for a social a social reason? Yes. Okay. A hundred percent. Because in the... Do you see how, how good Black Panther did? Yeah, that's, see that's how true. Good, uh, a movie about Falcon could do? Yeah. Well, Cap. Cap, Cap but because in the comic books, Bucky is Captain first. first. Uh -huh. Right. Right, and Bucky has the Captain America powers, so it's just that's, it would, that's the only reason why I think it would make sense, sense. But but you know, I don't. And, and at this point, I don't really care as long as they they make make Winter Soldier, a, you know, make him a badass again. Don't do like they've kind of dumbed him down so much and made him. He's not really like a pillar of the universe anymore. He's like a grain of salt in it. But you're right on Groot as well. He did not get a chance to shine at all in the movie. He just got blasted away from yeah. what I saw. He was like barely in there. Just uh, yeah, and just seemed kind of disappointed because he was he had such a great scene with Thor at the you know near the end of Avengers: Infinity War. And I thought my prediction was that they were gonna was, the Groot was a way bigger key to rescuing everyone. I thought everyone was in a different dimension. They were gonna use Groot's arm in yeah. Stormbreaker. So it gets to the point where yes, they they go ahead and they defeat Thanos's army because Tony the Gauntlet actually that's been played hot potato finally ends up in the hands after a battle after it oh, was actually scene. it was on Thanos and he's right ready to do the snap but they prevented him from doing the snap and instead Tony Stark actually gets a hold of the Infinity Gauntlet and or the Infinity Iron Iron Gauntlet or whatever well, what you want to call it. I don't think they got. I they think got they the got stone. the stones. I think because oh, they got the stones. That's right. They got the, the stones. Bleeding edge armor. Because so he, he had his own do, gauntlet. Yeah. He had his own gauntlet ready to go. Well, yeah. It can be whatever. It just, it just it comes together as to why Doctor Strange said, "If I tell you, it won't happen." Yes. Yeah, so right. Right. Well, because that was a good scene too, where they had the like he goes, he he does like, the, 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 the one, one and then you see he clicks. He knows what he has to do. And I honestly, to you know, if you tell me what you guys think about this, I don't think that his death would have worked any other way than how it happened like because i kept thinking he's going to get stabbed to the chest with that giant sword yeah but like his death scene would not have had the impact that it had unless it happened like that i totally thought that was true. yeah the it, it, way he it worked yeah again uh tony stark out uh, you know outsmarted him basically put it uh, had his own iron gauntlet ready because like you said it was adaptive on his suit and basically did the snap himself after thanos did his own snap but didn't quite work because he didn't have the stones on it and it was, think. yep yep not quite there but unfortunately during the course of the snap and because he did the snap the repercussions unfortunately became fatal oh. for tony stark and unfortunately led to the death of, of iron man well at least the death of tony stark per se i'm i'm, I'm assuming and thanos yeah mm -hmm. thanos and the entire black army uh, that's all gone that was all wiped away Tony Stark, unfortunately, uh, after a, a poignant death scene, also, you know, had passed away. I don't think it's the death of the Iron Man character. 
I really don't think yeah. it's the death of the Iron like Man. The character. death of Steve Jobs, though. Is it going to? Prog- is it everything going to progress well after this? Are they going to keep developing better technology after that point? I- I'm sure because Stark Enterprise is still a thing. Look at uh, Happy Hogan's in Spider Man, right? And he's still yeah. wearing and, and Pepper and Pepper. They're still wearing the brand. So Ashy, well, good riddance. I never liked her anyway. So um, <laughs> I, I would have because what she said that you know how they she with Nick she Fury would, uh, she would yeah like that she said she'll come do a brief in for just a, a few and a few scenes like every other whatever yeah. movie she's needed in it that's fine but yeah nothing ah. like nothing major like not a consistent role like she yeah. said do you, do you think cuz we discussed our theories after this do you think that they are going to put iron man's character on ice or do you think they're going to have the either the daughter or the kid from Iron Man 3 take up the... the... I I really think it's the kid because there's a reason that he was there. Yeah. Yeah. They focused on just him. Everyone else was with somebody. Yeah. Right. The only one alone amongst them all being focused on... Yeah. I forgot. I didn't know who you were. There was something going on there. Yeah. I think there's definitely something with that. I think... Yeah. He hasn't been involved since then and now all of a sudden here I am. Yeah. I I think there might be a time... It, like before we see something else like that, you know, come into play. Cause I mean, there's going to be time either way after this movie, there's mm. a, a break is needed. No, the Iron Man doesn't need to come back right away. Yeah. Right. Um, but, but he does. I think he does need to come I, back. Yeah. I, I watch every, you know, the whole thing come back is super long format. Like, you know, HBO style where it's like, we get like, that's Disney Plus. I know, imagine that the Avengers reboot where we actually do get the time to explore yeah. all those arcs you were talking yeah, that's about. Another conference. <laughs> That's another conversation for another time, but I think that with Disney Plus, we are going to get overloaded on Marvel stuff, and people are going to start getting tired of it. Uh, that's a definite possibility, and especially the fact that this was such a finale for this phase, this part of it, that it's going to be hard for to rev that hype cycle once again. I think a lot of people are going to be, you know, when the Black Widow movie comes out or when Eternals and, and all that comes out, Shang-Chi... I don't think you're going to get anywhere near the reception for it that you're seeing at the tail end of what you saw before Infinity War Endgame, which is sad because even if they, they could be really good films, but we, you know, a lot of people are not going to know that because they're going to be so done and over superhero f- films to the point where it's going to take another. Yeah, it's exactly oversaturation. What all the other famous directors have said, you know, that's all oversaturation of superhero films. Well, at this point in time, we still love superhero films, but I think at this point next year or the year you know after that or the year after that we're going to be a little bit as a community a little bit kind of burned out on it to the point where it's going to take time to build that up again with strong characters. At least Marvel. Yeah, at least Marvel. Well, so, the you DC, know, DC you know, they, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right now they're going a little bit positive although Shazam didn't quite make the money that they wanted to. Oh. Shazam the character well, well received. Compared I didn't to pers- a bunch of other DC movies. I, I didn't. I didn't personally think it was a, a good movie at all. I thought, I thought it was okay at best. But I thought Zachary Levi is is really really good. Was he's, he? He fits as he fits as Chuck. Isn't, isn't okay at best like a a good for DC? Though? I thought the rest. Of, I thought the, <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, he, he. I didn't see Aquaman. Okay, oh. place yourself as a great character in a lousy story with lousy direction. <laughs> And lousy set pieces. Mm-hmm. There you go. You talk about Shazam. That's in general. I wanted to mention. Yeah, don't this. don't get uh, him started again with Wonder Woman. I wanted like. to mention this earlier. A movie because this movie was incredibly long. I personally, a movie that I felt like took like that seemed way longer than even this was like Batman versus Superman. Oh, oh I gosh. felt like that just kept going on forever and nothing was happening. But this movie did nothing did happen. That's why, yeah, right. right? Th- this movie didn't. I didn't get that. Even with some of the solar reports, I didn't feel that. Well, I remember like when when the first Lord of the Rings came out, mm-hmm. and that was longer than most formats at the time. Exactly. But it didn't feel that way because I remember I saw that movie like five times. Right. That was a very good film. I think one of the. It's, like, it's just all. It's all about how engaged you are in the film. It's like a what it, a lot of people have been saying in like interviews. It's like they could have made this movie longer if they really wanted to. Oh, yeah. And it, it, it's like it's Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and that was criticized no, no, as being no. a long film. Mm-hmm. But you know why is it Josh's and ours number one film of 2017? Because it, it's it's really good. It's really really good. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, I can go on about how great this movie is, but it's just intellectually engaging. So, so we get back to where we, you know, like I said, the the Avengers they won. 
It came at a great cost because Iron Man unfortunately kicked the bucket and it goes into closing off all these other arcs as far as what's going on with the Avengers. And do you like the the tail end of how it worked out, this war of the Avengers, the choices that they made at the end, starting with what happened at the funeral, who was there, where they were standing? Because I know there's a lot of issues with where Captain Marvel was standing in the back, which I, you know, she didn't know Tony. Exactly. So, 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 yeah. So how she was she, kind of there with start well, with uh, Fury. She was with Fury. Yeah, but Fury always hides in the back. You know, Fury's, Fury's, Fury's he's like overseeing everything. He's his friend. Yeah. So that to me is. Yeah, she was. No, she was there. Was she, yeah, she I saw was, her. She is there right before you get to the steps. Yep. Yeah, right past the Guardians of the Galaxy. You get to the kid from Iron Man 3. You get to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Then you get to her. I think she was standing somewhere else. I forget. With, then you what's go, his face? Lucky, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Was no, it? no, happy no, was no, the other guy the, from Shield. I mean, no, it wasn't uh, no Colson. Colson's, yeah, Colson's dead that time. Where's she went? I, I don't know on his own show. I know he got that. dusted in on his show. Colson oh. on his show, but I, you know, I don't know if they brought him back. I don't know how that relates to whole anything. Yeah. You know, they they've pretty much messed up Agents of Shield. Yeah, so. We'll find out in June when they play their little games and see it. Exactly. So. You know, do you guys like how they closed off the arcs for all the characters? And if you had to pick one that you didn't like, why? Hulk. Like, I, I didn't like the Hulk, but we already talked I, about that. Yeah, yeah. Besides the Hulk, though, yeah. I, I I thought it was okay. The the one that I didn't like very much was, I mean, and I I see why they did it. They want to give Captain America his happy ending, right? But they kind of not. I love Captain America. Okay, so Captain America, he returns the Infinity Stones, and then they're like, he'll be back in five seconds. They go, count me down, five, four, three, and then nothing comes back. And so, and then all of a sudden, they find him sitting on a bench as a 90 year old or whatever, and he passes the shield off to, to Sam. And he, they ask him about the woman because he's got a wedding ring on. They ask him who the woman was, and he says, I don't want to talk about it. But then they show like a flashback scene to him with, I love with that part. Peggy Carter. Yeah, no, it was cool. But I feel like by doing that, they kind of canceled out the backbone of his character. That whole thing where like heroes, ha- you're a hero, right? You have to make sacrifices just because of what you you can do and what you chose to do with your life. You don't get to have a happy ending. But this guy's old. He's been around for I, so long. I, I get it. But he said, but he said, he said, he said, Tony. Uh, he was like Tony. He said, "I, I got a lot. He got whatever." Uh, Tony. Tony said, "I uh, I needed to get a life, so I decided to get one." He goes, "He saw a chance that he could possibly have a life, and he took it." Yeah, which like which he is what enough. he which is what he never did throughout the whole and his whole my, film career. Yeah, and my uh, but my other beef with that is there's no way that a character, somebody with his abilities, ha- can live a normal life. Like you'd be you'd be attracted to the danger, right? But he's, he's dude. He's, he's he's got. He's a soldier. He's got probably got severe PTSD from all the stuff he's had to do. You can't imagine he doesn't want to break for the rest of his life. I think he does want to break, but again, that goes against everything they put into into his character. Who did? So does so does, so, does, so does I'm saying you know Hydra, but you know they went there. Yeah, but th- that was that was a you know that served a purpose. But they also but see they all everybody switched see. Tony was selfless and Captain America was selfish, which is the opposite of what they started out as. Yeah, that's true. I, I just, I, I don't, it just doesn't feel coherent with his character it's to me. Evolution. I think a lot of that was them finally understanding each other too. Were they always they're heads understanding each other's point of, that, of view? Yeah. Now they finally yeah. Because he said, what's the great line he always says? He goes, you're not the one to make the sacrifice play. Mm-hmm. From the Avengers. But yeah, from the first Avengers. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, I think it, it, did I, I kind of like the Steve Rogers deal because obviously he, it was it didn't seem like it was ever going to be meant to be for him to go back to Angel Carter. And I think at some point in time, they just had to go ahead and say, you know what, if Chris Evans doesn't want to be a part of this and the easy call to make was him dying because, you know what, everybody in the grandmother had him dying. We it all had him. Back yeah. In Civil War. yeah, we all had him dying in this movie. Sure, and the way they found a creative out for it and still make a happy ending, which hopefully will please a lot of fans, even though they will not have Chris Evans until they, unless they get really creative. Yeah, and really happy with the cash. He'll take over on the Robert Downey Jr. fund. It's <laughs> it's funny, too, how they don't talk about how he's just going to leave himself in the ice. You know, there's two Captain Americas in this timeline. There's not two Captain Americas. Remember, the Tilda Swinton explains it to what, or and so does Mark Ruffalo. If I put it back in the exact moment, that can't that timeline yeah. never happens. What I thought, 
But then the arc would have had to have happened, wouldn't it? No, because they, how did no, he, he end said, up there no, on the he bench? Because he, right he still he still existed. Which she's he went back in time with the pen part, though, not the goblin. She still she still knew him though, right? Captain America, he existed in that timeline. He had to have Carter. It canceled. No, he's he's in his own timeline though. I'm talking about he put the stones back, so all that canceled itself out. He's he's he's, he's not thro- he's not in he's not frozen in ice. So then, he, as he grew up, he probably would turn on TV and see the Avengers fighting with Captain America. That's because he still has <laughs> memories of what he's just. He's still a man out of time. He's just in a different time now. Yeah. Boy, can he it, dance. Well, he's kind of in his own time, really. Yep, and he did get that dance after all. He had a date. You're listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos. If you're tired of sifting through flea markets for rare and unique games, we can help. Retro City Games in Henderson, Nevada, only five minutes from the Las Vegas Strip, has all your favorite gaming staples, classics, and a wide selection of rare games with new stuff always appearing on our shelves. Come in and chat with Nicole or Doug about your love of games and watch as they help you complete your collection or find your childhood favorite. And don't forget, Retro City Games loves trade-ins. So if you have any Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, Xbox, PlayStation, or even PC games, come in and visit Retro City Games today. Welcome to the new metropolis of gaming, Retro City Games. We got little glimpses of what's going on, you know, as far as after the battle is concerned of what everybody's doing now we got the happy ending for a lot of so far at least for a lot of the main characters that were part of it and you know i guess it does make that happy ending that will make a lot of marvel fans happy and to me it it pays off somewhat in the investment that you've made over the course of the 22 films i love the fan service as far as when they go back in time or the references to it or the whether they're subtle or they're overt i i love the references to it so let me get down to this and let's get ask the question thinking bomb back on it i because before this podcast i was thinking maybe you know it's going to be really super high in this list but i'm i'm reevaluating it and i'll share my thoughts here in a second but where do you think this fits in your timeline as far as your your you know the whole marvel cinematic universe where do you think it ends up it's not in my my top five but it's probably a six or seven i would say Oh, hold on, I do want to ask you guys, though, the Scarlet Witch, right? When she was facing off against Thanos, there's some darkness in her eyes. So now that Disney owns Fox, do you think they're going to maybe lean towards that House of M storyline? Yes. I hope so. <laughs> with, maybe with her... Uh, you know, maybe with her series on Disney Plus. Well, they still, they still, they still, they still, they still got to figure out how to merge the MCU and the X-Men, though. Right. That's another story for another uh, yeah. day. Yeah. The Quantum Realm. So, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead, Justin. Uh, I would put I put Endgame in my top five. I think I probably put it around five because because I like I, I like seriousness, I like drama, so I really liked the tugging at string certain strings at the right moments. I thought that was cleverly done. I, that's what kind of like why I like my my top my top MCU film is Winter Soldier. Yeah, there you go, man. There you go. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. So Chad, uh, it's gonna be my top five for sure. A big rating for me in movies is how often during the movie is my brain able to realize that I'm watching a movie where I do I, where I step back and go like, okay, I'm watching a movie versus if I never have that thought at all, that's a really good thing. Uh, and so this movie kept me, uh, it kept me enthralled for a good portion, even during the slow parts. You know, I don't know if I was just so excited for all this stuff that was happening and, you know, all, all the nostalgia, you know, during the beginning was, you know, I was just eating it up, but I uh, I don't I feel like there wasn't a lot of uh, moments that lost my attention, so it kept the flow going pretty good. So it'll be in your top five. In my top five. Name a number. Uh, four. Okay. Tony. Ooh. This is the first movie I've ever seen back to back in a twelve-hour period. Nice. So it's definitely top five. As a movie as a whole, I thought it was it was great. Uh, I'd probably give it like a nine out of ten if I had to rate it that way. And putting it on my top five. It is that's difficult because there's so many movies to choose from and rank because uh, almost none of them except for like th- Thor movies and like the Incredible Hulk were like I could skip over. So anything above that is just high to me, but I th- I'd probably rate it like four or five in a top five. OK, me. that seems to be the going rate, although Josh is a little bit lower, but not by much. To me, I'm always more interested in the origin stories than the end of the end of the journey. <laughs> That's a good out. I like that out. Just, yeah. there this, this tugged my heartstrings in in a lot of ways. So 
Go ahead, Jamie. Everybody's already said it. I'm gonna say it too. Top five, obviously. I noticed there's not a it's not a top number one. No. I of noticed not. nobody number one. There's always another number one. I mean But where where do you rank in your top five? In my top five? Three, surprisingly enough. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna probably say I think because for me it was Winter Soldier number one mm-hmm. going in, and then Infinity War number two, and then number three for me was GOTG, the original. Mm-hmm that those were three really good movies. GOTG hasn't aged as well as I liked over the co- course of the past you know, few times I've watched it, but it's still an extremely good movie. I'm beginning to think that even with its flaws that it has over the course of three hours, I, it, it is also a top five film because there are such strong moments in this film that really, as a fan, you are blessed to have, and it does pay off in a lot of ways on that end. There are some narrative things, as we've talked about, as I said, that I would fix, but these are tweaks any of every scene. It's like, okay, this is how the Russo see the scene. I would see it a little bit differently, but the end goal would be the same. This scene, they see it differently. I would tweak it just a little bit, but the end goal would be the same. Mm-hmm. So how they get there would be a little bit different than I would, but I still, still say it still get there. And then the fan service is just truly tremendous on it. And, and to me, I, as a Marvel fan, I really enjoyed it. So I think for me, it's going to sit right around three or four. Hey. Um, and so I think that's where it's going to suffer. But not, I was, I was, before we started, I was like, oh, yeah, someone. Then I thought, you know what? Now that we're, I'm really thinking about it, I, I'm going to see it again, but I think probably it's going to yeah. be a three or four. So you rank Winter Soldier number one then? Oh, but yeah. What does everybody else rank as their number one? Probably say for me would be Civil War. You can be honest. If it's the David Hasselhoff, Nick Fury film, like, <laughs> no, no judgment at all. It's it's really difficult for me because there's a lot of like number nostalgia. One. It's, number it's, one Avenger, number it's one so Marvel, hard. Or Avengers, right? Number one MCU. Okay. It's twenty two choices. Yeah. Not that hard. Oh, well, that's pretty. That's pretty difficult choice. Not really. Out of all of these, which one? Okay, okay, I'm, okay. You're on a deserted island. You're given a chance. That you have only one MCU film, which is your favorite, which you can watch again and again and again and again and still enjoy it each and every time. Incredible. Infinity War. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. me too. Infinity War. If we're going, if we're going for like a movie that I want, that's, that's your that I could watch choice. over and over, and it's so well rounded. Well, that should be your be number Infinity one choice. choice. That should be. Yeah. I mean, Winter Soldier, it's the best movie, but Infinity yeah. War is too. Also, the big, thing for me, also the big thing for me for Winter Soldier is the soundtrack. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. It had like one of the best soundtracks. Uh, but if I liked it more than Infinity War. But you, if I said. Uh, on on the deserted island, I would want Infinity War. That doesn't make sense. So well, it, it for me. Well, well, think about, think about it. Did anybody here see the Hydra thing coming in Winter Soldier? I I mean I didn't. No. I Did didn't. anybody else? I mean that's why it's no. for the think that one of the greatest. That's one of the best ones for mm-hmm. me. Is it? I didn't see that coming at all. Yeah. And Robert Redford. And you know, Robert, yeah. He's one of the best villains ever in the MCU. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and that gave uh, Samuel Jackson the most screen time. Yeah. And I, which I really, I mean, it was just all great. The oh, action how, scenes, how, everything was great. Yeah. It was very realistic, very uh, practical. Subtle nods to people. I like, like I like practical Strange. effects. All right, Josh, let's hear it from you, man. Mine is also Winter Soldier, and not not. I mean, for more than that stuff, there it's the idea that they took the Marvel formula and they were able to say show like, hey, we're capable of a different style of filmmaking than what you've been shown already. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, they dabbled at that. They they made what Ant Man a heist film. They made other parts of the MCU different types of film than just uh, like, yeah, like Thor Ragnarok was more like a space opera and, and something of that nature. And they've, they've tried different things, but they really hit on all the high notes with Winter Soldier, making to a spy thriller, making to something different, yet still having that superhero edge to it. Yeah. One thing they, they did well in this also, which they have done, I think, I think Avengers Infinity War was, did, was pretty well done. I think this was better was the, the jokes were better. Well timed, better delivered. Were a little excessive. They're a little excessive in Infinity War, and especially in the Second Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor Ragnarok and stuff like that. But this, I felt like they were really well in Endgame. Yeah, there was one powerful moment in this movie that we kind of washed over a little bit was the uh, reunion of Spider Man yeah. and Tony Stark, yes. and how powerful Finally got that, that was when they. <laughs> Right, well, that, was, that was Stark doesn't do hugs. But that was the impetus, uh, and that's something we should have touched on a little bit more. But that was the impetus for reason why Tony Stark helped develop the technology that Hank Pym had had started on and had discovered, and 
he created his own quantum time machine. He was reluctant to do it, mm -hmm. but because of <laughs> his thoughts on Spider-Man and how touched he was and, you know, a sunlight character to him, that it, it caused him to go ahead and reevaluate where he is at and, and see what he could do to help out. And obviously that was the key to, you know, why he, he did what he did. I also like the... Uh, the re hold, hold on, hold on. Before we move on to another character, I, I, that was kind of the end of his his evolution, right? The even how they the archetype of the Tin Man, like how, even how they they use that that uh, the heart plaque as an anchor, right? To show prove Tony Stark has a heart. Mm -hmm. That's been an anchor for his character for so long, and then he finally the end of his journey towards becoming human came to fruition. I think with that hug with Peter Parker. What was, the, what was the line in Avengers but just before you know Captain America told him you wouldn't lay down on the line or what? He says, you're not the guy to make the sacrifice play to lay down on the line and let the exactly. guy crawl across you. But that's because um, Tony Stark indicates to well, him. Well, like yeah, I said, he's, he's, not, he's, be, he's becoming he's, he's self, a playboy philanthropist. He's not, self, that, so. he's not uh, selfish. He's selfless now. Yeah. So it completely transformed his character. And a lot of it had to do with his, his affection. For, it started in um, for Ultron. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, no, it wasn't. Ultron. No, 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 it was not. It was, uh, it, civil. It wasn't. It was. Civil. It was Winter. It was uh, Winter Soldier. That was what caused the change. For Tony Stark. I'm pretty sure. What or it was that and the Hydra thing, and then the Battle of Los. He remember Tony he has, Stark wasn't in. No, but he but the Hydra thing, but okay. then betraying everybody and the oh, crumbling yeah. and stuff, and then remember yeah. he says he has flashbacks to the Battle of New York, and that's when he started to change. That's when he created Ultron. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. But he became aware of. It's so cool because you know you see that scene where. In the past, Tony Stark is coming up to Robert, Robert Redford, and they're battling over the, the Tesseract, and they, you know who has that or whatnot. It was it's the it was, old Tony where he's yeah, so, like when they have the I think it's Iron Man two where they have the court scenes exactly. But mm -hmm. the uh, the new Tony, the the one in the uh, t you know that came down there from the, from the future, uh, it's funny you recognize. Okay, they're all bad. Yeah. yeah. So he's got these. He's got the skinny, so he knows you know what's going on. They're they're all Hydra. I like how he's telling Scott how they're all bad, and he goes, "Yeah, they look like bad guys." <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I also like the the evolution about his um his relationship with his father because you remember in the early movies he has a really disdain and resentment for his father, but as we go on here through um, Civil War and all the flashbacks and stuff, uh, he grows a better appreciation for his dad. Yeah, he, it, it grows with his dad. I think that um, that's kind of a real life thing too. Like you don't really come, you hate your parents growing up. Everyone does, but you don't really come to appreciate what your parents do. Well, well and, and our, and Robert Day Jr. had a, an interesting childhood and young, uh, young life. Yeah. We all have those moments, but we don't really appreciate what our parents did for us until we become parents ourselves. This is true. This is true. But yeah, it's a great way to end up. And you know, we didn't get that answer. No comment. I'm hesitating. here, aren't I? Okay. <laughs> you drink the fifth. I mean, play the fifth. There's an argument on the way home there for you. No, I'm kidding. I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. walking there, home. There you go. Exactly. Yeah, I'll be right. driving by. Jeez, Why is walking he walking home. in 100 degree heat? Oh, well. Oh. There'll be for level up. There Why you is go. Tony still walking out of here. Exactly. But all in all, to me, it looks like everyone out here said it was a very good film for us. Uh, it's higher up on the echelon list for yeah. the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It may not have been the ultimate as far as what we were hoping for, but still. To get a movie that, again, like Infinity War, the Russos were directed to go ahead and we need you to go and get all these characters together, make them all ha each have their own importance into it, with some exceptions. Like, you know, there you could say what you want about Groot, Winter Soldier, and a couple others, not really having that arc to go ahead and, and be a part of. But for the most part, the Russos did give you a payoff that's worth seeing. And I think overall, like I said, it should be a satisfying experience if you watch Infinity War and Avengers Endgame going forward back to back. I think it, it's really like a great, uh, what, five plus hour, yeah. you know, viewing event for you. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of hours, but it goes by well enough. It goes by fast enough. You don't realize you're, you're sitting there for three hours. It doesn't drag. The pacing, even though a lot of people, like I said, it, in the first part was slow, it had meaning. It had emphasis. Mm -hmm. It was building. Yeah, and it was building. So it didn't seem like it dragged, even though it was slower. And it's building that tension, like you were saying. So I think overall, like I said, from all of us, we think that if you haven't seen it yet and you're listening to our spoiler cast, shame on you. Go ahead. Go ahead and see it because I think it's well worth it. You guys concur? Concur. Go, yes. yes. Here, here. Go see it in the theater. Yeah. IMAX. I'm going for my third one. round. Nice. Tonight? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> in six hours? 
how many a world record. record? How many times <laughs> did you see Endgame in a 24 hour period? I, I saw the first Lord of the Rings three times, three days in a row. I think three three, three days like after Tony three days after school, me and my friend, we both went three days in a row. My goodness. And I, th- I thought I was crazy about it. You know, we named our kids after Lord of the Rings characters. Yeah. But yeah, there you go. You take the gate, my friend. You oh. win. You win. <laughs> Appreciate so much you listening to our spoiler cast on Avengers Endgame. Any last thoughts on the way out, guys? Or want to plug anything before we head on out? I mean, I know that we we kind of know this next couple movies, but the uh, the the somewhat future is oh, yeah. It, let's talk about the future. It's kind of cool. Yeah. So it's it's because it's unknown because you don't know where it's going. I mean, there was an ominous sound at the end of the credits, which you guys uh, no, we you know. know clued me in. So into it's what what did you say it was uh, just Iron Man? It's Iron Man in the cave when he's building the original. In the first Iron, Iron Man, Man. Right. yeah, my number three rated. Did you mind that there was no end credit scene? Yeah, so yeah, it's future. it's called Endgame. Why would there be an end credit scene for a yeah, movie called forward. Endgame? That makes sense. Well, setting up maybe something even it, small for the future. Well, they did. They got the sound clip, the smallest yeah. of the smallest. It, it would have been nice, but at the same time, I'm not upset that they, there wasn't. Well, like, that was, but, but, okay, was, that, but that was the, time, that was the most prominent death. So it, that that was like the beginning of his yeah. story. So well, at the end of his story, think about this too. With the sound clip and everything, it's more of him, I guess, an homage to like you know, okay. Yeah. This how it door's started. closing, but it's not completely locked. Yeah. Well, you could lock it in like the next Ant Man movie to where you can't do that kind of time travel because it's going to destroy the quantum realm. So now you can't do that. The, and yeah. also, think of, they ha, they ha, don't want to make any announcements until after Spider Man. So dropping an in credit right. scene would be detrimental to that exactly. strategy. And the scene with Thor on the uh, ship with the uh, Guardians kind of felt like an end scene to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. th- that had this like, that, feeling. That it totally screamed. It. Guess what? Yeah. Volume three, Thor is going to be around. That scene right there could have been at the end, and it still would have felt. Yeah, it felt that was definitely a longer scene out of yeah. all of them that were. Yeah. No, it's uh, yeah. it's guns, guns back on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which leads me to this. I mean, like I said, we got our closure, we got our end game, so to speak, and now it's going on to starting next year with more of a new phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe because actually what. Kevin Feige said it ends with the latest with Spider-Man. From home. Yeah, Far yeah. From Home. So where does that leave us? Because a lot of people, especially casual fans or people who just want to move on to something else, will jump off the ship. And so now you're going to have with Eternals, with Shang-Chi, with others. Do you think we're going to go back to standalone movies and not an over overarching story? I think there still will be some of that, like a, like a slight overarching, but yeah. it, but you think it, you think it'll it'll go back like to the start it off. It's like yeah. come up with an idea. They'll be standalone. Like like, do you think this next Spider Man movie is going to be a standalone film? Like to where there's not going to be like a, a leading into the next movie. It's going mean, to lead into the next movie, but it's going to lead I mean, into their Spider Verse. Yeah, those, those end not credits. Into the the MCU verse. No. Yeah. Yeah. The, those end credit scenes for Spider Man will be for Venom or whoever they want to bring uh, it. Or Morbius or anybody else Sand they want to bring Exactly. Because Morbius is they're making a movie of. Venom 2, they're, they're making a movie of. And and yeah, that will be looted because that's Sony. Yeah. That's a business decision for Sony to go ahead and continue that timeline. But as far as the MCU, I think that's all Marvel's call. And I don't think they'll go ahead and pull the trigger on anything for Far From Home. I think, like you said, there's just going to be a complete wash Almost like a reset, in a way, but starting fresh, sort of speak, almost, but with something familiar. Because I believe the Black Widow movie is the first movie, or is it the Eternals next? Is next on the list? I don't think we have release dates on anything, yeah. so yeah. we don't know. So we'll know. We'll know. So if Black Widow's the first, the reason why they're doing it is because it's still something familiar. But for some reason, or however it takes, they're going to go ahead and try and relate that and start, kick that off for the next phase of the Marvel mm-hmm. Universe. Yeah, I mean, because we, we have things like we have Black Panther. Yeah, there, there, Doctor there will Strange. be another. Yeah, Black Panther two. That's already, in, you know, Strange, yeah, Doctor Strange. Two. There's, there's. Mark Ruffalo has another. Remember, that's Universal. Movie. That's Universal's call. That's not. That's, 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 that's not. Well, I'm not call. saying like a Hulk standalone movie as, as he won't but I mean it. like. The contract is Marvel can only use him if it's an ensemble film of some kind. Yeah, they cannot. So yeah, it has, be, it has to be more than him. The, it's him and Namor seem to be the only main characters of any note that seem to have, are are still up in the air at this point. So, what movie do you think Hulk can be? In Which is next? for Namor, it's weird because Namor is like the origin of all superpowered people in the Marvel universe. Yeah, they can't use them because of yeah. a bonehead decision that was probably done in the nineties. It's Ron, when Ron Perlman. Yeah. 
I mean, we're just going to go from here, but the, you know, the future I, I'm like, I said, I'm, I'm excited for Shang-Chi. I'd love to see as you and I talked about a martial arts film that gets people excited to go see a martial arts film, oh, sure. at least outside of the Asian marketplace, because they follow martial arts film to the T, but the rest of the world depends seemingly on ebbs and flows. Everybody loved when Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon hit. That seemed to be hit the Universal. When Jackie Chan became famous, when Jet Li became famous, that was great. But right now we're in sort of lull. But it's coming, no, it's coming back because combat sports is beating us on the rise. But not martial arts films yet. Yeah, kind of. But Shang-Chi could change that perception, and I'm hopeful for that. Like I said, the Eternals, I don't know much about the Eternals. But then again, we didn't know much about the Guardians of the Galaxy. So they may hit the jackpot twice. So we'll have to wait and see. Angelina Jolie, she's going to play a character. Obviously going to get more big names for it. So, But yeah, the Eternals concept, I'm, I'm very unfamiliar with. So Josh is going to have to enlighten me in upcoming episodes. But the future is looking bright. It's still, but it's just not going to be as bright as what it is right now with Endgame. So guys, any last thoughts? I know we're kind of burnt out after our full spoiler cast for talking about it at nauseum, seemingly. But mm. still, it was a great conversation. I, I enjoyed it, hearing your thoughts. You know, spoiling it for everybody out there. And but yeah, any last thoughts? Anything you want to plug on the way out? Josh, Humana Comedia, he's burned out. He's he's all marveled out for now. He's already gone through that PTSD. Uh I'll, I'll plug my album. Yeah, there you go. My, go ahead. I'm 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 gonna be releasing my self-titled album next month. And so yeah, I'd be looking forward to it. It's gonna be on Spotify. I don't know. I'm actually not all the way sure what it's gonna be called right now, but that's okay. I'm pretty sure it'll just be Hyper Schmidt. Buy this album, please. There you Buy go. It, please, yeah. Stream it, share it, that's, add it to your playlists. As as uh, Chad would say, Hyper Schmidt. That's Hyper and S C H M I T T. That's right. I like that right there. Nice. All right, Justin. Anything going on with Topic Apocalypse? No, just like I said, just tune in. Topic Apocalypse at any uh, all social media. We release episodes uh, usually once a week. Just new content, getting better. Just tune in. Uh, that sounds good. And and last guys, Game Source. Same, just tune in, stay up with us for getting ready to do some things with um, Game Source Plus One. I know Gerald likes doing that. Yes, yes, I like these mysterious things that you're talking about. Yes, yes, that's good. Um, just keep an eye out, and you know, we'll still keep trying to do this as much as we can. Lots and of I, things in the pipeline, but not sure if we're gonna bring it out there yet. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And Josh, it looks like he's completely done. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have stuff I'm working on, but I just um, my brain's fried to get today, guys. I'm sorry. I don't have a release date for it yet. Make so, one up right now. So I wrote a book. It's done. It'll be out soon. Just keep following my social media pages. It's called Congratulations, You Suck. But anyways, thank you guys so much for being a part of this. It is, again, Pop Culture Cosmos, Avengers Endgame spoiler cast. Appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. And here's hoping you have yourself a great day. <laughs>